And we're back. Oh, got to hit the record buttons, huh? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. Welcome, guys. Ooh, I sound super quiet. Do you? I can't hear myself at all in my head. Can't hear yourself. Well, speak up. I am. I'm, I'm right in. I'm in the microphone. Well, you're peeking there. Am I? Hello. Testing. Are you plugged in all the way? Am I? Yes. Hello. That works. Go team. How is everybody's night going? It's a pretty fancy shirt you're wearing over there. Oh, do you think so? I do think so. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Very nice. I'm willing to bet there's a lot of people that are eager to buy that shirt. If only they knew where to get it. Stick around. We'll tell you later. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's my favorite part of it. Yeah. The chess pieces. Super excited. You guys can't see it, but Chris got me. Daddy got me. Stand this it up. Massive computer thing. And it rests, right? And I have this, it's a window that's looking at like a little mountain, mountain over top with rain coming down the windows. There's a massive pine tree. It's, it's going to relax me. <laughs> this is nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, they, they're not making them anymore. I love it. Yeah. I, I wanted what pearly things has. That yeah. little thing. This is cooler. That's I like so this. much more expensive, even though they don't make them. I like it. It's nice. Yeah. They, Adjustable. That's the original um, Microsoft Studio. Mm -hmm. They came out with a Studio 2 Plus. Um, and it's got like an actual graphics card in it. But they haven't made a new one in I don't know, three or four years, which is unlike tech. So, But that's way better than the, the iPad. It is much nicer than the iPad. I have such... Ugh. My body is deteriorating and my eyesight is not what it used to be. So this is much larger. Enhanced print. Yeah. It's so distracting. I need you to stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it sounds. It's so. <laughs> yep. All right. Are we just going to jump into it? Is there anything you would like to talk about? Um, I mean, I don't really. We recorded episode 29 today. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think that we are one week away from 30 in terms of recording time. Right. We have to do a ruminations and revelations still this week, but we are recording into July at this point. Mm. Um, we're doing things. We really are. We really are. See what Zach said? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Funny. All right, we just getting into it? Yeah, fuck it, why not? All right, so chapter two of Choice Theory. So he goes in this talking about uh, growing up, everyone has heard the, it's the my house, my rules. Yeah, yeah, yes we have. <laughs> <laughs> so our families, grandparents are often an exception try to make us do things their way. And an example is putting soda away in the fridge. That is one of the biggest gripes I've ever heard from a person. Like when they complain about their childhood, one thing they really bring up is when I was a kid, my parents and I would get into an argument over how I would put the soda away in the fridge because he would just put the 12 pack in the fridge and rip it open. And they're like, no, you have to take every can out of the 12 pack and put it in the fridge. Why? That, that's how they wanted it. And that would turn into an argument. <laughs> and that's just one of those things where they are trying to make you conform to the way they want things done, even though it's the same result. So in this, we learn external control psychology. And external control psychology is pretty much a person who tends to feel out of control in life. Other forces, random hiccups in life, or actions of others are more responsible for the events that occur in their individual life than they are. Make sense? Yep. Everybody on par? Oh, it's just me. 
It is just you. Hmm. Very pale. Ivory complexion. So as said prior, we must understand the why of our actions. And a lot of the times going into our adulthood, we have adapted or adopted the things that were either pushed onto us or we learned through survival mechanisms, those kinds of things. And we never question the why. And then he says motivation could be built into our genes. I put a question mark behind that because I've never heard that ever suggested that motivation in life could be linked into the DNA of our genes. Have you ever heard of that? No. Crazy. You want to go live on TikTok? Do I want to go live on TikTok? I don't know. I kind of have a rough relationship with TikTok right now. I really feel like I can't be myself. You know, tell me what I can and can't do. Not really giving me an explanation as to why I would get like a reprimand, a punishment. Just to generalize broad, you did something bad. You have to accept it. Just seems very toxic to me. Very red flag. I'm going to take a hit before we do it. Okay, you do that, babe. Guys, we are, uh, well, she's dying. Wow. While she's getting her TikTok shit set up, we are under 200 viewers right now. If you guys could share the content to your social and try to get that viewer account up, that would be gangster. Okay. Uh, here we go, TikTok. You know, I really don't even think it's to the point where TikTok and I can, like, talk it out. There's not an understanding there. Very one-sided. I'm still going on. I have a whole skit in my brain right now that I'm acting out in parts. And nobody understands. Mm -mm. Well, someone might get it. We'll see. Okay. Oh. There we are. All right, so that's going live. Anything you want to say before I keep going? Nope. Okay. So from birth, we rely on an outside source for survival. When you're an infant, you're a newborn. There is literally nothing you can do to ensure that you wake up the next day. All your body can do by itself is probably breathe. So as we evolve, we gain the recognition that our parents respond to our demands. So at some point, a child becomes cognitive enough to say... Oh, I just cried and mom gave me what I wanted. Let's do that again. See if I do it again. And then they recognize that at that point, they can exert a certain control. They become the center of the universe. So this begins, <clears throat> this begins the lifelong practice of trying to control others. What? I looked at the chat like a dumbass. Oh my goodness. Somebody said, Peaches, I match your hits and I tell you, most lives is real nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for you. I'm so glad that we're vibing together, guys. It's funny. All right. Uh, so this begins the lifelong practice of trying to control others. Right. So an example, there is, this is an example he gave in the book and I'm just summarizing it. So there was a flight with a 15-month-old baby that cried for three hours. This child could not be soothed. Nothing was making the baby feel better. Three hours straight, just inconsolable. Mom is clearly exhausted. There are other people on the flight who have tried to help her. And at some point, the mom is so overexhausted and feels so bad about everything happening, she just yells, this is a flight from hell. Just pure frustration all around. So a couple of things from that scenario is that the baby was in pain. So as a infant, pain equals my life is threatened. There is a chance that this thing could end me. So the baby is literally in panic mode, trying to get whatever help the baby needs, and it's expecting it from the caregiver. So the baby is crying for help from mom, 
and the baby is unable to understand that there is nothing the mom can do to help the pain. For example, the ears aren't popping due to cabin pressure. You're looking at comments. I'm listening. The, the cabin pressure. I was actually trying. To, I was. I was debating on whether or not I wanted to do this, but since you've stopped talking, I'm going to do it too. Okay. What I, are you doing? I'm gonna. I'm gonna go live on from TikTok? my phone on TikTok, but okay. only aimed at you. Only aimed at why? Because I don't want to be on here. So. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can. <laughs> this works. Uh, although I can't be on the Wi-Fi. Okay. All right. Proceed, ma'am. It's really wild to me that, like, the dream of, like, the YouTube thing and being on camera was, like, your thing, and I have three cameras on me right now. Um, yeah, it was. I don't like going live on TikTok. I have a really hard time with the amount of screens that I have right now. What? It's cackling. With your phone. It, oh. Yeah, I hear it in the... Burp, burp, burp. Well, then we're not doing that one. Go team. I still hear it. It should stop. No, the cackling's going. It should stop. I stopped the live stream. Okay. Is it still doing it? No, it stopped. Okay. It's crazy that's only your phone. It's crazy that we put that to our fucking head to like yeah. talk to people. You know, it's just tumors. No biggie. Radiation to the brain. And then yeah. we'll wonder why we're all fucking stupid. I like watching you have the zoomies. I enjoy you. Anything you want to add before we keep going? All right. So versus, so the baby versus an example, a 10 year old who would, even if he was terrified, would understand that screaming would do absolutely nothing in a situation where his ears won't pop or he's uncomfortable on a flight. He also knows that having that drastic reaction could jeopardize the relationship with the mom that would drive her away from comfort, not towards comfort. And that primal fear that he's experiencing, like that panic of someone needs to comfort me, I'm going to scream, that is that genetic fighting that primal emotion. Right. And that's where he ties it into how our psyche could be related to our genes. It's also noted that people were warm to the mother. They wanted to help the child. We are so willing as a species to help Spain, uh, strangers with charity. We donate clothing. We are willing to put ourselves in uncomfortable situations. An example is, <laughs> personal example, when I was moving out of the apartment and in with you, I gave away a bunch of furniture. And I posted on everything that I put up there was, I'm not lifting a thing. Like, you are bringing somebody with you. My back is out of commission. Either you're moving it or it's not going with you. And this couple came... And they were super sweet. And one of them was pregnant. So she couldn't help lift. And I was like, so how are you going to get this to your, to your van? And she was like, oh, I didn't think about that. And I was like, let me help you. <laughs> so I put myself in a uncomfortable position to help a family because she was pregnant and they were excited. And I couldn't be like, well, get fucked. Because I know what it's like to have kids and struggle. And when I find free furniture, I hope no one takes it because I need it. Right. So I helped lift the thing and we carried it and we finagled it into their tiny little car. And I went back inside and I took a bunch of Advil. <laughs> Still felt good about yourself though, didn't you? Huh? Still felt good about yourself though, didn't you? It did. I was grumpy about it. Yeah. And I, I wasn't shitty. I mean, I, I, they probably saw I was a little frustrated. Because I, I, I have a hard time controlling my face. I'm laughing because I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Not because I find it funny. I want to <laughs> clarify. <laughs> so that is an example. We also go out of our way listening to, for an example, why a coworker could be depressed. Or somebody who you've just met, you have slight interest in. You're going to listen to why they're anxious. 
But do we go out of our way to do that for the people we love? We should. That wasn't his point in that part of the book, <laughs> but I was thinking about it because he talks about how humans go out of their way and we have kind of a pack mentality. You know, we can survive without one another, but it's a lot easier right. when we survive together. And he was talking about how genetically there is, like how there's survival. We have a need to to be good to one another, to help, to have that satisfaction of I did something to help someone else. And we do it all the time. You see it constantly, paying for people's food in a drive through behind you, right? Or buying food for someone who's homeless or buying dog food for someone or donating clothes for free, like I said. And then you get home and you hit your spouse with a bunch of bullshit. Where's the compassion for the people that you claim to love the most when you're willing to give it to strangers in the world? Want to hear something really fucked up? Yeah. Saw something on, on Facebook the other day that said, stop paying for the, the coffee of the people behind you. They can obviously afford their drinks. Mm -hmm. Instead, pay off student lunches. Yeah. And um, I was like, damn. Because I've been that guy that's paid for the cars yeah. behind me's drinks. And uh, I've also been the guy that's paid off Walmart layaways for Christmas. So, mm -hmm. like, I, I do both. But I was like, I never once thought about the fact that, like, these people can obviously afford their fucking Starbucks or they wouldn't right. be in the car. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I brought that up to you a couple months ago. Did you? I did, yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's where I saw it then. I, I was like, know. how would you feel about paying off student lunches? Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. I would rather do the Walmart layaway thing for Christmas. Yeah. Yep. Oh, school... we're saying hi to Michelle. Yeah, so do that. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Thanks for helping in the background. All right, guys. So we are currently live on YouTube. We are doing Choice Theory. We're going into Chapter 2. If you would like to be a part of the conversation, go to the YouTube channel. I'm not going to be looking at the chat much over here. So I hope to see you there. Anything else we'd like to add? Be there or be square. Because if you're not there, you're not around. <laughs> That's how I would say it. <laughs> I'm so extra. All right. So added genetic code. Rooted as strong as survival to be closely involved with other humans. That's kind of what we were just touching on. How we feel good after we do good things for others. All right, now we're getting to the book. I have Joan Jett stuck in my head. All right, so just so everyone can see, Choice Theory, William Glasser, MD. Reading little blurbs from the book. For those of you who didn't know, MD does not stand for medical doctor. It stands for my dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You say the dorkiest thing. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're so fun. Yeah, big old nerd. All right. So in an affluent, affluent, aff affluent, aff affluent. In an affluent country such as the United States, where literal survival is not a major concern for most people, the vast majority of the misery we suffer or the happiness we enjoy is related to our ability to satisfy these non-survival instructions. And those non-survival instructions are a sense of belonging, having love, compassion, feeling empathized with and understood. Anything? Okay. Okay. So he goes on to talk about genes and he says that something I didn't know, which is absolutely insane, is that when a sperm and an egg combine, they are each bringing 50,000 genes to the first cell. So 100,000 genes go into one cell. And that sub cell subdivides billions of times, right? Geneticists are discovering now, uh, they're, I mean... <laughs> I wrote they're discovering new shit daily, but my mind was like, no, don't say that. Be professional. No, say it. Fuck it. That's who we are. 
Uh, geneticists are discovering new shit daily. <laughs> <laughs> they agree that thousands fewer than the 100,000 genes that go into that first cell are needed to produce a healthy baby. So when it divides all those billions and billions of times, he believes that a vast majority of those that are not yet understood are linked to psychology and how we behave. Okay. That was a lot of information for me to process, right? I get so excited I, about learning things. I forgot how different the first parts of this book was compared to the later part of the books. Yeah. Like later parts of the book. Oh, people are popping in from TikTok. Yep. Heck yeah. For you guys who are new here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. We are on the hunt to 100,000 and we are so close. We are getting so close. We are so close that, ladies and gentlemen, I, in fact, cleaned out the garage today so that in the event that I get my dream car, I can park it in said garage instead of the driveway. He really did clean out the garage. I'm super excited about contributing my part tomorrow by cleaning that little toolbox out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take that big ass toolbox and stick it in the whiskey room when the whiskey room is done. It's going to look good. Yep. Yeah. All right. Anything else going on? Seeing subscribers pop up. Love it. Oh, yeah. Right. I dig it. Dig it like a shovel. Come again. I dig it like a shovel. That tickles me. Figured I'd switch it up from dope. Got to keep you on your toes every once in a while. Right. Like, logically, a man of your stature would be like a really nice, hefty, like, get her done shovel, right? But I'm imagining like a little hiking shovel that I can fold up and put in my back pocket. The poop shovels. I'm sorry, what? The poop shovels. No, that takes away the cuteness I'm push <laughs> picturing here. How about a Kroval? Do you know what a Kroval is? Oh, what? Stand by. <laughs> No way you have this. Of course I do. I'm so excited. Can you just I'm about to lose control, right? And I think he likes it. That's not a mashup. That's the rest of the song. I'm fairly certain. It's on, it has a little backpack. It does. It's so that I can mount it to the car seat. <laughs> no way. I can't believe you've never seen this. <laughs> it looks tougher than I do. Yeah. Is it serrated? Yeah. Uh, yes. This is a, a multi-tool survival zombie apocalypse weapon. Okay. My right? glasses are dirty. But it, it's got a hammer and a crowbar pry bar on one <gasps> side. And... Shut up. You can use it as a chair. I'm impressed. Right? I'm very impressed. So it's a crowbar. A crowbar. I love mashups of things. This is fantastic. How much was it? Like 140 bucks. That's not bad. <laughs> I feel underprepared. Do you? I do. I didn't even know this existed. Well, you shouldn't feel underprepared because I have one. Right, but I would have been out here like, oh, it's doing things. This is making me uncomfortable. I'd be out here like a dumbass carrying five different tools when I can those, have it in Those one. five different tools would probably be lighter than this thing. Is it heavy? Yeah, it's heavy. Can I hold it? Uh, yeah. There, it's also got paracord around the handle so that you have ex extra ropes if you need it. Uh, and then there's... I feel, like, I feel like I'm in show and tell right now. Right. This is cool. Oh, okay. I don't have anything in there. I took oh, it out. Stop. What is it? The handle's hollow. So you can put like meds or extra rope or fishing string or. Oh, that's not that bad. Definitely zombie melee tool. Yeah. Hmm. I wouldn't want to hike with this. No, I wouldn't either. Um, we would take turns. <laughs> No, you wouldn't. I'd carry it. Yeah? Yeah. Your ego wouldn't let you? No, I would carry it because it's a melee weapon. Oh. Zombie apocalypse. That's one reason why I would take that hiking. Are you kidding so, me? I so ultra what am I light supposed to do? Hike. Sing opera as you kill zombies? No, background? just point them out. Or Shaun of the Dead. 
Well, you can sing the song by Queen that's at the end of Shaun of the Dead where they're like... Which one? Is it Killer? Yeah. Killer Queen? Yeah. I can do it on the saxophone. <laughs> All right. I need emergency sunglasses. AJ said, how many first forms did you have before this? You? None. Or, he's only... You've had that one Swedish fish one. Yeah, earlier today. Hmm? I see the ADHD. Back to the book. Therefore. Okay, yep. Yeah. Therefore, besides survival, which depends on a lot of our psych, uh, physiology. Are you going to say something? <laughs> Who has ADHD now? I thought, you, I thought you were like getting ready to say something. Mm -mm. Okay. I believe we are genetically programmed to try to satisfy four psychological needs, love and belonging, power, freedom, and fun. Do I satisfy the fun one for you? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad. All our behavior is always our best choice at the time we make the choice to satisfy one or more of these needs. That was a horrifying sentence to read. Why is that? Terrifying. I'm going to read it again, okay? I believe we are genetically programmed to try to satisfy four psychological needs, love and belonging, power, freedom, and fun. All our behavior is always our best choice at the time we make the choice to satisfy one or more of these needs. Break it down for us, peaches, teaches. I just, I am, it's a lot, it's a lot to process so many scenarios in my brain. When you really look at that sentence, you are always making the best choice in the moment to satisfy one of those needs. Love and belonging. People put themselves in very, very uncomfortable and time, sometimes very high stress situations. Like the back of a Volkswagen? Somebody in the chat will understand that movie reference. If you understood the movie reference, I want to hear it. Otherwise, proceed. Okay. And I don't know. You don't know what? I don't remember. I ruined your train of thought. Moving on. Moving on. So we, we, we made a shirt that says love is not enough. Yeah, factual. We hear constantly in emails, he does this, he berates me, he yells at me, he puts me down. He won't stop talking to girls on Snapchat. And I know I should leave, but I love him. So at that point, even though you are uncomfortable and hurt, your sense of loving and belonging is more important than your emotional needs being met. That primal survival, I need to be loved, overruns. So even though you're in a shitty situation, that choice of staying fills that need of needing to be loved. Yeah. Make sense? Yep. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Zach got it. Of course Zach got it. This makes me so dehydrated. So much psychology to understand. <laughs> I watched myself on the thing to see if I could do a water commercial. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? I don't think so. My my mouth moves weird. <laughs> it's not aesthetically pleasing to look at. I wouldn't buy a water <laughs> from that company. <laughs> Next one is power. There are people who do really shitty things and they are aware of the shitty things they do and they make excuses and rationalize it because they enjoy being that top dog. They enjoy being the one knowing that you will bend to their will and there's nothing you're going to do about it. That power, that need to fill that primal need for power overruns their morals or their values. Insane. Even though it's not a good choice, the best choice for them in that moment to meet that need of power could be a shitty human being. Crazy. I'm becoming uncomfortable. Next one is freedom. 
Oh man, people will do insane things for freedom. If you haven't listened to, I believe her name is Yo Yomi, Yoni, Yomi Park. She's a North Korean defector. I believe that's what they're called when, they're, when they escape and they speak out against it. Yes. Whew. The things that she and her family did for freedom. Absolutely insane. But in those moments to get to that, that satisfaction, that need of freedom. Wow. But did you know what William Wallace did for freedom? William Wallace? Mm-hmm. What are you going to say, you fuck? It's just Braveheart. I was going to make a movie reference. Oh, my God. <laughs> I could tell by the smirk on your face. Yeah, I have a hard time keeping serious sometimes. It helps me because I can't tell if, if this is satire or not, or if you're being jokey. There are times you say things and I'm like, oh, really? And you're like, no, <laughs> dumb bitch. <laughs> I, don't, I don't call no, you a dumb bitch. You've never said that. But that's the kind of joking air it gives off. There's there's somebody in the chat right now, and yeah. her name is Sweet Carol Ann. Mm -hmm. And every time the name pops up on the screen, all I can think of is that song. And I know that's not her name in dun, the chat. Dun, dun, yep. Dun. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then fun. We hear constantly, my partner's not fun. I go out to the clubs and have fun with my friends and stay until 3 a.m. because I don't have fun at home. People are willing to put their marriages and their relationships in jeopardy because the mundane, boring, and sometimes very high-stress, high-anxiety situations that they live in is just crippling. It's not a way to live. No, it's not. That was a lot for me to process. My Lord, people to satiate those needs will do things to hurt the people they love, will do things to hurt themselves and don't care because in that moment, in that high emotional moment, that is the best choice. Because people are selfish. Are you sizing me up or are you trying to be cute? Uh, I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting over here. You're squinting. I am not. I <laughs> you. No, they couldn't see it. <laughs> I was like, they saw it. They're going to back me up. Right, guys? And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I got too cocky too quick. All right, our genes motivate us far beyond survival. Our need for love and belonging drives us not only to care for others to the point of caring for others we do not know, but we also seek satisfying relationships with special people such as mates, family members, and friends all of our lives. Other genes drive us to strive for power, freedom, and fun. And that's something that's seen across all, what do you call them? Large-brained mammals. Never heard that term. Makes me slightly uncomfortable. Had to research it a little bit. Okay, so what defines a large-brained mammal? Like whales, elephants. Well, they're big by nature. Right. Lions. Other things that have a social circle with the ability to communicate beyond the basic needs. Gotcha. Okay. Like dolphins. Dolphins do shit for fun. They have social circles... What are you looking at? <laughs> That's Clan said, I believe you peaches in Great Wolf for hashtag Team Chris. <laughs> they did not. Did, did they just divide us? Uh, they're trying to. Don't allow it to happen, babe. Stay focused. Stay on task. You got this. Focus. <laughs> I'm bleeping my mind right now. Like, I got to text you. Where's my phone? Fuck. We're on TikTok. Yep. <laughs> I am so dedicated to showing that we're a team. I was like, <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take a hit. So excuse me. <laughs> oh, man. Jesus. 
Yes, team Chris and Peaches. Thank you. Teamwork. Somebody hashtag teamwork. <coughs> Here's something fun. Mm. I bought the domain chrisandpeaches.com today. I love that. <coughs> I love that. You okay? Yeah, I inhaled it a little bit and I felt it like skip. And I got it down the right pipe. We're good. It's very unlike you to have an issue swallowing. That was good. It was, wasn't it? That was really good. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Have you ever seen the I'm so itchy? <laughs> <laughs> You know how people who are on like hard drugs get that itch uh, when they need a when they need that fix? Yeah. That's I don't even remember what I was saying. What was I saying? I don't either. I'm so distracted. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to the thing. Okay. Wow, we're at almost 700 on TikTok. Yeah. Crazy. I have so much fun with you. And this is why I don't seek it outside of the relationship. Crazy how that works. I hate that we're so far ahead in our, our recording. Yeah. Um, Because 29 was a lot of conversation today that we could have applied to all of what we're doing tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, I love that picture behind Chris. That uh, I took that picture. Yeah. But um, it was very hard to do with me being in the picture. Right. You had a timer. Yep. But if you, if you guys want to see that whole thing, Sinful Images on Instagram is where we posted that entire set. Mm-hmm. All right. So evolution has provided humans and higher order animals. He also started using that too, higher order animals. So people who have a people. Animals that have that social structure, a hierarchy. There is a very well known, if this dude says no, it means no. Right. So evolution has provided humans and higher order animals with genes that grant us the ability to feel Based on on the basis of this ability, the first thing we know and more than anything we will ever know is how we feel. So we have the widest range of feelings as human beings. We also remember what we were doing when we felt very good or very bad. On the basis of these memories, we struggle to feel as good as we can and as much as we are able try to avoid feeling bad. Nope. Anything on that? Nope. Okay. Just blocked someone from our chat. Oh, why is that? Because they came in talking shit. About what? I, I don't know. I just didn't like what they said. But I have God power over here. Oh, okay. Like this. Oh, did you add them? <laughs> okay. Okay, so do I just keep going? Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll pick right back up. Okay. So, in knowing that we have the widest range of feelings and that we also remember what we were doing when we felt very good or very bad, we create that cognitive bias. So, if something felt really good one time, for example, say I give you a gift and you get super emotional about it, I'm going to want to replicate that feeling. Right. The chances of me replicating that feeling are very slim. You actually see that the most in kids. Yeah. Because they want a parent please. So the mm -hmm. first time you laugh or do something, they, they repeat that pattern over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And they're having a blast because they think that they're making you happy still. You know. Right. Yeah. But that definitely carries into adulthood. So that could create a negative feeling. And then also having a bad feeling, you become scared to experience things because now you're like, oh, well, what if this happens? So that's where it can kind of nullify that we could be having the greatest time of our life and we're really not, or we are too scared to try things because we're fearful of that negative aspect. Therefore, the <laughs> tangible... 
What? Somebody said he threw an ad in there. I give up using headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, the tangible motivation for all our behaviors is to feel as good as possible as often as possible. Mm. So this is kind of a long one. If at any point you want me to stop, let me know. I have no problem. Mm. <laughs> but as stop! A, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wait? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll stop. I'm good. I got it out of my system. Did you? I did. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever been on Shigra? Yes. You know that feeling, like when they when you get there and they stop and you're waiting for the drop. Mm -hmm. You shouted stop and that that stomach feeling. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Exciting and fun. <laughs> All right. But as we grow from infancy to childhood and then to adulthood, we discover that feeling good becomes more and more difficult because our relationships with people grow more and more complex. Because everyone starts having opinions and feelings and thoughts and disagreements and, oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And then there's that, oh, well, you're not going to accept me. Okay, well, fuck you. So, <laughs> so exhausting. Like being, what did he call us? A high order, higher order animal. And having to work to survive and pay bills and rent and everything's kind of just crazy right now. So exhausting. And on top of that, we have to figure out how to talk to each other. When we talk to each other every day. It's a lot. I could be a cow. <laughs> I could be a mob gator laying on a massive plot of land, just basking in the sun. To the toddler on the airplane, things were simple. If it hurt, scream and try to get mother to solve the problem. To the 10 year old, things were more complicated. Bear the pain and don't try to get mother to do what she can't do, which is help. If I scream, I may endanger my relationship with her. So as much as we want to feel good and avoid pain, our relationships with people, with the people we learn we need, have a significant effect on what we choose to do. Can you read that again from the part where if I scream, I damage the relationship with her? If I scream, I may endanger my relationship with her. So as much as we want to feel good and avoid pain, our relationships with the people we learn we need have a significant effect on what we choose to do. How profound is that? Because that applies to literally everything in life. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, when I stand in the kitchen for prolonged periods of time, I have a lot of back pain. I was injured when I was working for Coke. I've had two spinal blocks because of C-sections. I just, it constantly hurts. And I'm standing in the kitchen for two and a half, three hours cooking. It sucks. But that's something that I, I put myself through because the relationships that I have with my family and knowing that I'm a good mother and a good provider and a good wife is more important to me in that moment long term. Right. Crazy. Yep. To achieve a good relationship, most of us are willing to suffer pain, even a lot of pain, because the relationship is more important to us than the suffering. So like a super toxic mom who's constantly in your shit and trying to dictate how you live your life at 35 years old. You're willing to endure that knowing that when you pick up that phone, she's going to complain about something or criticize something or complain about something going on in your life. And when her phone, when her name pops up, you do that sigh and you go, can I text her an excuse? Can I pretend I'm in an appointment? But you don't cut her off because that's your mom. To gain, keep, and improve relationships, we are willing to engage in long-term unpleasant activities because we believe that in the end, we will feel better and get closer to the people we need. Even without the promise of a better relationship, most of us are willing to delay pleasure or suffer pain and hope that we will feel better or suffer less later. So the people who are living on hopium... Wait, wait, wait. Say, say that again, please. 
Okay. To gain, keep, and improve relationships, we are willing to engage in long-term unpleasant activities because we believe that in the end, we will feel better and get closer to the people we need. Even without the promise of a better relationship, most of us are willing to delay pleasure or suffer pain in the hope that we will feel better or suffer less later. (coughs) I made a note so you can go on with your hopium thing. So the people who are living on the hopium, who are with a partner, who has shown that they don't care, they know that what they're doing is upsetting you. You've said it a million times. They know what you want them to do to make you feel better, and they're choosing not to do it. Those are the people who will put themselves in that long-term unpleasant situation because they have that hope that, okay, they're going to recognize and then in a year, my life is going to be so much better. We're going to be happy. If, if they just understand, if they just heard me, everything will be great. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. So when you said that, you said that you're going to suffer now or suffer later. Mm. And that reminded me of the conversation that we had with Dakota during the live stream and, and the uh, interview that we had with Dakota is that you have to choose your hard. Yeah. And that you're going to suffer one way or another in this life. Mm -hmm. And you have a decision that you have to make on how you want to suffer and what you want to go about doing. And I guess in that sentence, there was choices being made there, but you you do have to choose how your suffering is going to go. I didn't catch that when I read the book, so. No. So in that, one thing I wrote down is that could be a problem for people pleasers. You are unable to differentiate. For example, the 10-year-old understands my ears aren't popping. There's absolutely nothing anybody can do for me. So what's screaming going to do? Right. Which more people understood that shit. Right. In that situation, this is not a problem. People pleasers will take that. I will put myself in an uncomfortable situation, just kind of accept it for what it is into the situation I just described where the person acknowledges that they're treating you poorly. They don't care that they're treating you poorly. They know what they can do to treat you better and they're choosing not to. So the people pleaser will live on that hopium, like I was saying, and continue to put themselves in that uncomfortable situation in the hopes. In a year, they won't feel it. Right. Anything you want to add? Nope. And then I wrote down sacrifice. Uh Uh-oh. 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 It's a good topic. Elaborate. On sacrifice? Uh Yeah. Isn't that what relationships are? Right. Isn't that what a healthy relationship is? Isn't Mm -hmm. isn't that how we've been together for as long as we have and we're still effectively in a honeymoon phase and our intimacy is great and we slow dance in the kitchen and... There's not days that go by where we don't have intimacy, even on days that we're not okay with each other, mm-hmm. because we sacrifice for each other. We serve each other. That I mean, you start a sentence with sacrifice, like, I'm, I'm engaged, let's go, yeah. run it. Okay. <clears throat> so, putting yourself in that uncomfortable situation for a good long-term outcome is a sacrifice. Yeah. Me standing in the kitchen for three hours kills my back, it wrecks it. I'm recognizing within the, like the last week or two, like my back pain has increased a little bit. It is what it is. I have a stool in the kitchen now where I sit down and I wait for whatever is in the oven to finish or I'm waiting for whatever is frying on the stove to finish so I can add in the next thing. That is a sacrifice that I'm willing to make to make sure my family's fed. We could door dash. We could. I could also get you a, a, a kitchen chair. There's kitchen chairs? Yeah, you just buy a giant bar stool, spin, something that you can sit on or get you something that rolls or that- get you a massage therapist once a week. Okay. Options are there. Okay. Now that I know that this is a thing, yeah. we can take care of it. But I've just been living with it. <laughs> that's, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make, though. Right. I don't want to spend... We have a family of four. Mm-hmm. If we order from Outback, that's going to be $100 for a dinner on DoorDash when I can cook gravy and biscuits for 10 bucks. Is that all that cost? Roughly. Mm. It depends on what we have in the house.
And then another one I wrote down that could fall into that sacrifice is holding your tongue and not bitching about the way the to- towels are folded. No. Or... Wait, are you saying that people should just shut up and choose their battles? Yes. No. You know, sometimes... Profound. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, like, what's another example that somebody could bitch about? Like, really just get on somebody about that's really like, oh, my gosh, you would you guys would argue about that. They sell toothpicks in different colors in a package, right? Like they have like yellow, red and blue and they're all just all jumbled up. We get home, we have a divider for the toothpicks, right? I want all the colors separated. (laughs) And put in their individual homes on the divider. It matches the salt and pepper shaker. We had to have it. So I need you to do this for me, please. And then it doesn't get done. And then I lose my mind because our toothpicks are not organized. It looks like an absolute mess by the stove. How how could we live this way? You know that I would go buy wooden toothpicks and throw all those colored plastic ones <laughs> in the trash, right? I'd be like, don't worry, babe. I got you. They'll all match. Everything will be right where it needs to be. That's an extreme example <laughs> of holding your tongue and not picking yeah. a battle. Yeah. I'm but about, sometimes I'm about, like... I'm about problem solving. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the things that we hear in emails, though, like that's what it sounds like yeah. to me. Yeah. Like we're, we're going to fight about where he throws his socks. Do you eat your Skittles one flavor at a time? Do I? Mm -hmm. It depends. Every time someone sends the cowboy hat with the mustache, I have to look. I have to admire myself. I would do fantastic as a bearded lady in the 1930s. Yeah. I do. Sometimes I eat my Skittles one at a time. It depends on my mood. Okay. I like mixing the yellow and lime ones, the lemon lime ones, and have like Sprite in my mouth. (laughs) I like the red and the purple ones together. Sometimes that's a nice combination. I meant like, do you eat, like, do you separate them and eat each individual color? No. Okay. I'll pick them up in my hand and I'll do that. (laughs) (laughs) They keep sending the cowboy hat now with the mustache. I'll do that in my hand. Like, I'll get a handful out (laughs) like a monster. I'm also somebody who eats like gobs of popcorn. Like, I will fill my face as much as I can as a chipmunk. That's, there's like five of them so far. <laughs> but yeah, I'll separate them in my hand and then eat those island of colors. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, eat my Skittles that way, my M&Ms, my jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there are things we can do for pleasure that don't depend on anyone except ourselves. Most people self-pleasure. Yes, they do. We get emails about that all the time, too. Yes, <laughs> we do. We also get pleasure from hurting people. Putting them down is a frequent way that we do that, which may satisfy our need for power. Do you know, like, the Chiquita lady on the banana? It was like a hat. <laughs> no, I... Can I do that for Halloween? Is that offensive? I don't know. I, I don't pay attention to that shit. I just want to have fun. That's it. No, I'll, I'll do the dude with the green shirt and the suspenders singing the song. Yeah. No, that's not it. Uh, shake it like a Polaroid picture. Do you know his name? Yeah, I do. I need help. Why? <laughs> this is fun for me. Let's see how long this will continue before you figure it out. Andre 3000. There you go. I was going to say Eric Andre 3000. I'm like, <laughs> no, they're two different people. Eric Andre is the ranch guy. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite meme of him is outside of the White House pulling on the gate saying, let me in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's how I feel when, when you deny me. <laughs> So we put people down, which may satisfy our longing for power, though it frustrates our need for love and belonging. Anxious people do that. They're going, they want the power. They want to feel in control. And then when that pushes the partner of the way, they're like, no, come back. Like, I love you. I want to be with you. 
And it's that cycle. I'm uncomfortable being the only one on the screen. Don't look at it. <laughs> it's hard. We can satisfy our survival genes by engaging in non-loving sex, just using another person's body for pleasure. That sentence made me want to shed my skin. Like rub up on a rock and just kind of get it off of me. <laughs> <laughs> that sentence just sounds so... We can satisfy our survival genes, our basic animal instincts, by engaging in non-loving sex, just using another person's body for pleasure. It's an object at that point. <laughs> I don't know if I can say this. We're live, so if you're not sure, don't say it. Uh, I'm going to alter it. So by that logic thinking at that point, you're a, a breathing flesh flight. You're breathing fleshlight? <laughs> yeah, I don't know who I am. <laughs> I was like, are you having a fucking stroke? <laughs> what the fuck did you just say? It took a minute to register that you were moving letters around. <laughs> oh man so i guess we can say it because <laughs> you did yeah that's not bad that's not bad oh man it... we can fool our brains with addictive drugs that provide feelings that are similar to how we feel when we when any need is satisfied The highlighter was dying as I was using it outside, so I was like scribbling really hard in the book to try to <laughs> get the color to show up. <laughs> I was getting so frustrated, and there was this fly in my face constantly. Oh, it was a flower crown. I want to learn to make those. Our society functions as well as it does because most of us never give up the search for happiness. Never give up on the idea that even though people may not be easy to get along with, we need them. We struggle to survive together. It is easier, more efficient, and usually feels better than if we struggle by ourselves. And of course, that satisfies our need for love and belonging. Any thoughts? You're looking so intense over there. It's my face. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Do I, do I need to, like, look less intense? <laughs> uh, I don't know what you You're want me to so do. You're so cute. <laughs> I like your cheeks when you smile. Are you bored? I'm sitting I... on my cheeks. She can't even see them right now. <laughs> He's talking about his booty cheeks. I'm going to go get some water. Okay. Can you get me a soda, please? Camera's on you. On me. Okay, well, everybody knows the thing. Gotta cover the TikTok screen. I'm going to have to cover the TikTok thing because I took a hit from my vape and someone Freeze, reported me. So I'm just going to cover you guys for a moment. Uh, stand by. Thank you. You were welcome. All right, guys. We we said that we would mention the t-shirt drop and let you guys know how to get the shirts. And oh, I guess I probably need to put it back on me. Um, I know that we said that we were going to mention when the t-shirts were dropping and where you could get them. Um, the t-shirts will be live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So one hour from now, you will be able to buy the Ego Kills Talent shirt that she is currently wearing at To Be Better. Oh. Dot co. Um, Can you see it? Looks good. Boom. That's it. To be better. Dot co. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So one hour from now, the t-shirts will be live on the website. 
I saw Gen A say that Peaches has some serious lung capacity. I play the Barry Sax. I have to have serious lung capacity. So I'm thinking in my mind, like, it's so difficult to keep myself in check because we're live and we can't edit anything. Right. And in my mind, I'm hearing White Snake, <laughs> Here I Go Again. <laughs> like a struggle song, like, you got to get it together. Ugh. All right. People who have no close relationships are almost always lonely and feel bad. Would you say that's a pretty fair consensus? Say it again. People who have no close relationships are almost always lonely and feel bad. Nope. I disagree with that. Why is that? Because I don't have a whole lot of friends or close personal attachments. Mm -hmm. And I'm content as fuck 99% of the time because I know that other people bring bullshit into my life. And I, I'm good being alone. I'm, but for the, the general public, in terms of most people, I would agree with that. Yeah. But I wouldn't say all people. I sized up my ears, and now that the tunnels are bigger, it's starting to, like, mm -hmm. doesn't fit inside the muff anymore. That's why I stopped wearing my plugs. Yeah. They have no confidence that they will feel good tomorrow because tomorrow will be as lonely as today. And like happy people, they concentrate on short-term pleasure. The alcoholic lives for the immediate feeling provided by alcohol that he may wrap his car around a tree does not cross his mind. Yes, it does. Okay. Yes, it does. Hmm. It did for me every time I drank. I didn't expect that. Yeah. That's why one of the main reasons why I quit drinking like I was drinking. That's why I have a three limit now, three a week, even though I don't utilize it. You know, not just as your wife, but as a human being, I'm proud of you. <laughs> just like as another breathing soul on this very difficult planet, I see you. You see me, huh? Yeah. Like, game recognizes game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Make him laugh today. Check. <laughs> Unlike happy people, they concentrate on short short term pleasure. Already read that. Yep. Where pleasure is concerned. Unhappy people may be totally irrational when they are seeking seeking instant gratification. Thoughts, opinion, opinions, feelings. Okay. Beware of getting involved with people who seem to be able to feel good but have no close friends. I read that. I was like, okay. I kind of get it. I have... People outside of my family. It's like my immediate family and like my mom and my sister. I have one person I would go to for like legit life advice that I, I would trust with what I'm telling and knowing it's not going to get out to anywhere. I don't have a lot of close friends. And I am genuinely happy. I, I don't view myself as a threat towards other people. He goes on to say that they will, they may be witty and fun to be around, but their humor is all put downs and hostility. If you marry such a person, you will soon be the recipient of that hostile humor and may regret it for the rest of your marriage. Yeah, I could see that there are definitely people like that. Right. And I, I could also see the other side of that. So what would you say are the things you would look for to differentiate the people who are like us who really just don't see the value in having a lot of friendships 
versus people who are sneaky and manipulative and like are an asshole to the general public, but like for the first year or so, they're nice to the person they're with and then they start bringing those tendencies into the relationship. I see value in, in having a lot of friends. Yeah. The problem is, is I would rather have quality over quantity. Right. And, and people are just scumbags now. Like for the most part, people equal shit. Like mm-hmm. I, I truly believe that. So I'm very selective about the people that I have around me because I'm not trying to have anybody hold me back in life or like slow me down or fuck right. up my peace. That's why there's no value in it. There's still va- well, no, there would there's value in having a lot of friends. I agree with that, but with but they having, have to be quality, right? Right. So, what would you say would be some of the things? Like, what would be a red flag to you? Because there are other people out there who think like we do. You know, if they're not a quality person, there's no point in having them in the life. They're if they're only going to hinder it or bring drama or bullshit to the doorstep. So you mean like early on red flags to notice that these people are scumbags? Right. Um, I mean, there's a lot of them. The way that they treat other people, people mm-hmm. that are not in the social circle, the way that they talk about people around them, if they gossip about their friends, the way that their relationship is with people like their family members, mm-hmm. um, their accountability or lack thereof. I mean, I, I pay attention to a lot of that shit. It's why I don't let people get close to me. I would say I would pay attention to things that they inquire about your life. You know, if they're constantly asking, so what are the what are the rough things going on in your marriage right now? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that, too. Or I heard something was going on with your sister. Is she okay? Yeah, that's that gossip shit. I'll yeah. cut somebody out of my social circle real fucking quick over that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I know that, I don't know. It, it's weird because, like, I used to be that person that when I would get new shit, I'd want to show all my friends and, like, tell everyone about it and, like, show and tell my stuff. And, and that's not the thing for me anymore. Like, I have I have a very small, select few people that, like, I will send photos to and be like, yo, check this out because I don't want people to like appease me Mm -hmm. over my excitement. Like I'd rather, I'd rather not show you or tell you what's going on in my life. If you're not going to be authentically happy for me, right? Because I'm going to be authentically happy for you. You know what I mean? Any of my friends come at me and they're like, yo, I I won $500 on a lottery ticket or my fucking landlord dropped my rent by 600 bucks or whatever, whatever's going on. I'm going to be overly excited. Like I love it when my friends are leveling up. I got a new raise. Fuck yeah, bro. Like there's not ever fake excitement there. Like I genuinely want to see people do well, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like I get a lot of that from people. So I don't, I don't share a lot of my life anymore because of it. Yeah, I get that. Assuming that we feel good much of the time and keep close to others who feel the same, how we feel tells us with great accuracy, how well we are satisfying our need for love and belonging and how well the other needs are satisfied if we satisfy them with people we care about. Did that make sense to you? Yep. Okay. Can you help me understand that? Read it one more time and I'll break it down as you're going. Okay. So assuming that we feel good much of the time and keep close to others who feel the same, how we feel tells us with great accuracy how well we are satisfying our need for love and belonging. So in that, from that point, if you are around people who are equally happy as you, the way that you feel when you're around them is satiating that love meter. Okay. And then it goes on to say, and how well the other needs are satisfied if we satisfy them with people we care about. So are they meaning like the fun needs? Yeah. Not the needs of the others in our life. Right. Okay. Each of us has a unique level of need satisfaction that tells us that this or that is satisfied and additional effort is not worthwhile. Right. Because if you're trying and you're not getting your needs met, why keep fucking trying? Right. Okay. That's why some people hit it off right away. When you go out with somebody and you meet them and they're new and everything is is on that exciting level, it's because all all four of those needs are being met in you. Mm -hmm. And when that changes, obviously, you find yourself in a roommate phase or you find yourself no longer speaking to people or the phone will ring and you're like, do I really want to answer the phone call from so-and-so because they're probably going to complain about something? You know what I mean? Like that whole dynamic changes. Or you got that pre-warning phone call from somebody else. Like, look out. Like, they're on a rampage. That's a red flag. Right. That would be enough. Yep. I've received phone calls like that. Like, hey, just so you know. If you get up in the morning and feel miserable, you can be sure that one or more of the five basic needs is not satisfied to the extent that you would like to satisfy that need or needs. 
Makes sense. Yep. So if every single day you're waking up and you're going, fuck. Yeah, something's not right. One of your basic needs is not being met. So, for example, if you wake up with the flu, the pain tells you that your need to survive is being threatened by an infection. If you awaken lonely because your last child has just left for college, your need for love and belonging is acutely unsatisfied. If you are up for a promotion at work and you will get the good and you will get the news today, your edginess, edginess is your way of dealing with this possible loss of power. If you get the promotion, you'll feel good. If you see not, how he said edginess instead of anxiety? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that you pointed that out. I didn't catch that. Yeah, no, that was intentional. Yeah. Um, if you don't get the promotion, you will feel worse than you feel right now. Here's a thought. You go all day not not knowing whether you're going to get that promotion and having that fear. And in that scenario, having the edginess that he worded it as instead of anxiety, that worry in the event that you actually get the promotion or don't get the promotion is mm-hmm. fucking useless. Yeah. Because you don't have a control beyond the point of just existing through your day mm-hmm. and all the work that you've done before you applied for that promotion. That's that's that cash in a, a check to pay a debt you don't owe. That's a good way to put that. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't worry about shit. Yeah. All right. If you have been counting on being free to go on a family vacation and discover that the dog is missing, you're angry that you're not at liberty to leave until you find him. So that disrupts that freedom need, right? If you are scheduled to have fun playing tennis, but it's starting to rain and you don't, you don't have to wonder if your need for fun is frustrated, your disappointment tells you immediately, immediately that it is. Once you learn about the needs, you can usually recognize which are frustrated when you feel bad and which are satisfied when you feel good. It may not be as obvious as in these clear-cut examples, but you can usually figure it out if you take time. So when you're feeling anxiety about something or something frustrates you and you don't understand why, like, I don't know, you know your man's at work and he goes out lunch at 12 o'clock every day and it's 12.10 and he hasn't called you yet like he usually does. And my, I just got so derailed. My mind just doesn't stop. What did it switch to? I don't know. It's just, it's like a carousel spinning at 50 miles an hour. So we got the Willy Wonka boat ride in your brain. Yeah. Okay, the basic needs. Right, so going back to that. He hasn't called you yet. It's been 10, 15 minutes. That anxiety kicks in. You have to question which need is not being satisfied right now. Is it loving and belonging? Are you feeling out of control? Do you feel like your power is kind of like loosening, which is a very big red flag because you don't control other people. What did he say the other one was? There was love, belonging. Fun wouldn't be in that. Uh, Love and belonging was one of the four. Right. Fun was one. uh, I don't remember. I don't have Power and freedom. Sure. (laughs) We'll go with that. (laughs) You know, it's really crazy when I think about the fact that four years ago, I didn't understand my own brain. I still don't understand my brain. I mean, I'm learning the pathways. It's like the Amazon jungle in there, and I'm taking a machete, and I'm like, I've carved out little pathways. I got little shelters going on. Definitely dodging shit and trying not to die. We're getting there. I have a better understanding. Hang on a second while you're looking that up. Okay. I just happened to look over to the chat and see, damn, $15. Hmm, do they read emails in Patreon? Yes, we read emails for Patreon, but if you're going to join Patreon just to send us an email and hope that it gets read, don't do that. I, I we're, We are building a community over there, and like we want people to be involved in the Discord community and like 
as much as we would love to make the $15 to have you in Discord for or Patreon for a little while, like don't join the Patreon just to get your emails read. We don't want you guys over there for that. Right. That's why we have the expedited emails. Yeah, exactly. Because we're behind on Patreon emails too. Like the emails will yeah. get read when they get read. Mm-hmm. Okay. There is one point in this where I'm going to have to go back to the first chapter. So I'm going to read that first. So in the first chapter, we talked about how there are four variations of the same attempting to control someone. So the first one is you wanted someone else to do what he or she refused to do. The second one is someone else was trying to make you do something you did not want to do. Or both you and someone else are trying to make each other do what neither wanted to do. So there was no common ground. No one was budging. No sacrifices were being made. So keep those three in mind as I read this next blurb. Almost every great book, play, or opera tells the story of people who, seeking sexual love, often start out well but fail miserably later on as criticizing, blaming, complaining, and jealousy take their toll on the relationship. Ooh, what are you making note of? Something that I just saw in the chat, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, well, now I'm curious. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be efficient. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to do a lot Mm -hmm. and I fucking can't wait until AJ's here so that these screens aren't on my desk Yeah, because I am having the hardest time keeping up. And it's also because like the two chapters that we're doing right now, I I read them the first time and then skipped them every time I've read the book since then because he's like prefacing later parts of the book by going through what we're going through right now. And it's necessary to understand later in the book, but it's dry. Um, Honey Bunny said... Um, I need a skincare and makeup routine by peaches. And earlier on episode 29, we were talking about other potential content Mm. and that was something that skincare got brought up. Is that something that you have any intention of doing for Patreon? How do I even do a video like that? I set up in the bathroom. Right. But what, what do I talk about? I have no fucking idea. I don't know about skincare. I don't, I put, I use... I have acne care. Sometimes I use a toner. I have a moisturizer with SPF during the day. I use an aloe uh, cream like twice a week. I just, I found things. I figured out what my skin type was. Well, you're already doing it, babe. You're just doing it to me instead of a a standalone video. Is that what a skincare video is? Yeah, you just talk about the products you use and why you use them and about your skin, you know, um, type or whatever you just said was. All right. So is that something that you're actually going to do one day? Because if so, there's people asking about it. We can point point them to Patreon. Okay. I suppose so, yeah. I'm not going to do my skincare in front of you guys. Why not? Why would I? It puts the lotion on its skin. Um, <laughs> you don't have to. You just take talk about the products you use and why okay. you use them. You, you said it puts the lotion on skin. Have you ever seen that lizard that laughs? Like the bearded dragon that's like, <laughs> <laughs> you said it puts the lotion and that's what I'm thinking. Like it puts the lotion on the skin. It's a uh, silence of the lambs. Yeah. Buffalo Bob. Right. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. That was good. <laughs> Isn't he the one who did like, yeah. Dance? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm so chaotic. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine? I'm trying to be like all like flirty for you and like a song starts playing and then it transitions into that and I do the fucking <laughs> Buffalo Bill. For you guys who are who are talking about Patreon currently in the chat, um, our Patreon, we're trying to move, we're, we're always going to do emails. To be clear, we are always going to do emails. Right. But we are trying to move into content that that is beyond that. We're starting to do interviews. Mm-hmm. We've, we're doing vlogs for Discord. Um, we want to start documenting more of our life and making videos like what we're doing now with the book breakdowns and the, the uh, ruminations and revelations that we do on Fridays, which uh, part one of that will be dropping tomorrow. Um, we, we are really trying to expand what we're doing past just the email reading. Yeah, it's very mentally taxing. It, I would like to have it content is a lot. that is diverse and fun to create. Right. 
Well, I think that's where the other stuff comes in too. Getting getting to the point where we just do emails on Sundays and and um, the podcast, mm-hmm. Sunday night live reads, and then the podcast that we record once a week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyways. All right, back to the book. <laughs> Someone said old Greg. I don't get it. You don't know old Greg. <laughs> he drinks Bailey's from a shoe. It was a thing. In like 2007. That was almost 20 years ago. That was not. Someone said, Peaches, let me make you some dreadlocks you can braid in. I actually used to have my hair locked up. Not for me. Not for me. I liked it when I had it, but it was a lot of maintenance. It really hurt my neck when I took showers. Weighed like 20 pounds. Yeah, because your hair that falls out every day is stuck there. Right. Yeah. When I had a massive depression and the back of my head became one massive mat. I didn't get out of bed for three months because I had a very bad pregnancy. And I ended up shaving my head. I tried brushing them out and it was just too painful. It took too long. I was at like seven hours of doing it and I was able to do one and a half of brushing them out. So I just shaved my head with it. I appreciate it. No, thank you, though. The beginning isn't so difficult, meaning relationships shown in media and literature and the TV shows. But our love and belonging genes demand that we keep love going for our whole lives. A demand that is hard to satisfy in an external control world. Would you like to say what an external control psychology world is? It's just external data being brought into your brain. Right. So that is saying that, well, and the external control is saying that there is a greater influence from the things outside of your life versus you having in your own life. Right. External data. Right. Right. It's the way I see that. It's the same thing. I just, I call it external data because Mm -hmm. all of that shit is things that you, you see in here that you are allowing to affect the decision making in your life. So external data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... In time, many of what seemed in the beginning to be good relationships start to deteriorate. It is this deterioration that makes the trials and tribulations of love so interesting in literature. If the love continued strong, there would be no story. People are all about the gossip of shit. Wait a minute. Say that again. What I just said? Yeah. The lo- if the if love, the love thing it'd be oh. a story. If the love continued strong, there would be no story. Really? In literature, yeah. Romeo so. and Juliet? What do you mean? The love story, Romeo and Juliet? Right, but they died at the end. Right, but their love stayed strong to the point that they killed themselves. And that entire process of that story is about their love and how strong it was. And that they were willing to kill themselves to be together in the afterlife. Right. But there's really no stories of, you know, they met, they fell in love. They had a average life and they were happy. And then one of them passed away peacefully next to the other. That's oh. not that's not a fun story or a captivating story in literature or okay. Okay. TV shows when we're watching something. Make sense? Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to shit on your theory. No, it, it, I mean if you if even if you were trying to shit on my theory, it doesn't change my perspective on it. Okay. I'm just up. trying to provide. You remember, you remember up? Yeah. The cartoon movie where they like flash through the life of the old man with the woman. Right. Right. Tell me that wasn't heart wrenching. I was devastated. See? Right. Great literature. (laughs) Okay. All right. I'm done. (laughs) So infidelity, (laughs) murder, suicide, and mental illness are the common miseries associated with deteriorating love. Well, I guess you're right because deteriorating was added in that. You're right. Sometimes I look at you and I'm like, you really don't like me, do you? (laughs) Why do you say that? Because I know that like you get on these little rides sometimes and I like dive bomb that shit. 
And you look at me like, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, I don't think shut the fuck up. There are certainly times where I'm like, I've been thinking about something for a few days. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hit him with this. I'm like, I'm not going to say anything, which is really hard for me because I enjoy sharing things with you and seeing your reaction to the way my brain works. And I hold it in. I'm like, I'm going to say it on the podcast. And he's going to be like, oh, my God, that's so profound. The things you say amaze me sometimes. I can't believe you're my wife. (laughs) (laughs) And then I say it. And then you're like, what I got from that was you don't land the plane in Florida. (laughs) 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 And I was like, great conversation, (laughs) babe. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> There's never a shut up thought. It's more of that. No, you got false <laughs> hope. You got yourself up there. Stop it. <laughs> That's so funny. Don't make me laugh again. That almost came out of my nose. Oh, man. Okay. The feelings of jealousy, abandonment, revenge, and despair often dominate the lover's behavior. But whether they kill, die, or suffer lesser degrees of misery, all people who are unhappy in love are involved in the first three variations of external control described in chapter one, which was those three things that I just read of trying to control one another. Any thoughts? Nope. Okay. So 11 is a couple of sentences highlighted from like six different paragraphs. Okay. So if this is not cohesive or does not make sense, let me know. We make and keep friends easily. It is love, mainly sexual love, that is the most frustrating part of this need of loving and belonging. Okay. Such a deep sigh. Yeah, because that comes down to people trying to control their partners and not their friends. Right. Okay. Okay. Because infidelity is the most universally fantasized, is almost universally fantasized when sexual love is not satisfying. There is no evidence that we are genetically driven to find sexual love with the same person for our entire lives. Okay. So. So find somebody that you have dope sex with, keep the intimacy alive and stay in the honeymoon phase. Then you don't have to worry about that. Right. So people want to say sex isn't the most important thing in a relationship. It's not the most important thing, but it is one of the important things one in a relationship. One of the most important things in a relationship. It is. So, yeah, if you're going to be in a monogamous relationship and you guys are saying this is it, like I am agreeing that this is the... Only sea world I'm a visit for the rest of my life. <laughs> You got to make sure you're compatible in all aspects. I would have been happy with any water park, but SeaWorld? (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fuck. He goes on to talk about that uh, high divorce rates does not equal the only indicator of an unhappy marriage. There are probably more unhappily married people who never divorce than those who actually do divorce. Right. In most of our minds, satisfying sex and satisfying love go together. But when this, we... this book was written 30 years ago. Yeah. Why are you saying? Because the divorce thing has changed drastically in the last 30 years. So much higher. Yep. I'm seeing little signs on the side of the road at intersections. Divorce, 350 bucks. 350, 349. Crazy. Crazy. 
But when we get married and make a commitment to each other for life, we have no idea how difficult it will be to, will be to keep both sex and love going for anywhere near a lifetime. As the relationship continues and the coercion with which too many of us are trying to control each other starts to take its toll, an association between sex and love becomes tenuous to non-existent. Mm-hmm. It's a choice. Everything that you just read, that's a decision that people make it to is. allow that to happen. And it, it's fucking work. Intimacy is work. Right. Long-term relationships is fucking work. None of it's easy. Mm-mm. You you know, we get asked constantly how long we've been together. Right. Constantly. Because people want to be like, oh, they're just in the honeymoon phase. Mm. That shit would have ended years ago. This is a fucking decision. Yeah. I look at you like you're a fucking snack and I'm a fat kid. Like, that's a choice. Mm-hmm. It's also a choice for me to go out of my way to be desirable for you. Right. Right. Because we want to be the best version of us for each other. Yeah. Because we don't live a selfish life. No. Yep. Okay. Oh, no meat. <laughs> huh? The, the subscriber that was just on the screen. Oh. It, it made me chuckle. I see some of them like, okay, that's clever. I yeah. like that. All right. So it is hard, if not impossible, to love someone who wants to control and change you or someone you want to control and change. Sex usually continues in the marriage, but is now, but it now becomes controlling. One or both partners practice external control and no longer finds love in the marriage And each blames the other for how lonely they both now feel. Right. I'm going to read that one more time. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit louder for those in the back. Sex usually continues in the marriage, but it now becomes controlling. One or both partners practice external control and no longer finds love in the marriage. And each blames the other for how lonely they both now feel. That's 95% of the emails that we get with people in a sexless marriage. And it's both people in the marriage weaponizing sex or withholding or not not being intimate with it and just agreeing to it because their partner wants it. Yeah. Yeah. Or just doing it to shut them up. I'm tired of hearing the mask for it. It's crazy. Yep. So he believes most people having sex are not in love or one is and the other is not. And they're just recognizing if I leave, I'm not going to have the life I have now. So yeah, this is just one of those things that I got to suck it up. If I want to have, if I want to maintain my quality of life, it's just one of those sacrifices, I guess. Wouldn't it make sense to just fix that shit though? It really would. It like, really would. Like if that's really how you feel, wouldn't it just be easier to try to regain intimacy and, and relearn your partner? As cheesy as this sounds, you know that song Pina Colada? Right. That entire song is about a, a dude answering a personal ad and seeing his wife. Right. On a newspaper. And they reconnected their marriage in new ways and like rekindled their shit. Granted, that would never fucking happen in real life because if you were like, oh, it's you. No, the fuck. That's not how that would go. Right. There'd be a whole lot of drama in the restaurant. Somebody in Florida would probably be getting shot. Florida man would be eating people like it would be right. weird. Like, why are you meeting somebody up in a cafe? Right. Well, why are you right. meeting? That'd up be a whole fucking mess with somebody but the premise of that song is that two people were able to rekindle themselves, their their marriage, learn new things about each other, start dating again, and fix their shit. Right. They were like, what a coincidence. Yeah. If you're that unhappy in your marriage and you're thinking about leaving, there's going to be a whole lot of work that's coming into that leaving. Why not fix your shit? Or at right. least try first. Yeah. You have to pick your heart. Yeah. That's going to be a shirt. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to have to be a shirt. He like said that, that shit, and I'm like, bruh. Yeah. Bruh. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yes, over here. Oh, yes, over here. Oh, yes, yes, over here. This is where we are. Good song. Was that an accent? I don't know. Was it? Did I do it or did you do it? I don't know. If that was, that's dope. I don't think I could replicate that. That's fantastic. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that. Many are willing to act in love to receive sex. That's insane to think about. We're not going to move in together. 
I'll be your boyfriend. And I get to hit it whenever I want to. And I just have to say, I love you. Dope. Chicks do that too. Hey, babe. Yeah. Let's uh, send everybody from TikTok to YouTube. Okay. Well, everybody currently on TikTok, I am ending this. So if you'd like to continue to be a part of the conversation or watching what we're doing, head over to the YouTube channel, the number two, be better. That's where we're live. See you guys. And we're smiling and we're done. <laughs> I do that to you guys too. Uh, I think I would want to hang out with me. I get it. I get why you guys would want to smoke sesh and whatnot. That was another another piece of content that we were talking about making. You know, I was thinking we could just go live on YouTube. I can sit here and smoke and just interact. Right, but shit. I think that we should do that with like a limited number of people as like a private invite only thing. Yeah. Yep, I really do. I know it's possible. Oh, people popping over from TikTok. Hey, guys. What's up? For all of you that are just joining from TikTok, please make sure to subscribe to the channel while you're here. Yes, please don't forget to do that. We are almost to 100K. We are working for that YouTube button. We have a podcast. <laughs> Crazy. Angel Peterson jumped over from TikTok and subscribed. Oh, Love hell that. yeah. Thank you, Angel. Oh, yeah, we should make shirts. For what? I don't know. Someone said you guys should make shirts. We should. That's a good idea. I want to sesh with Peaches. I saw a comment a minute ago that said, I would love to get advice from y'all, but it would be a lot to explain. So you want help in your relationship, but you're not even willing to do the work to type out a detailed email to send it to somebody. Tell me how much do you really want to actually affect change in your life? Right. Like how badly do you want it? Tristan Gaddy. Thank you. Oh, the subs are coming. Ashlyn, Michael. All right, let's go. Because otherwise I'm going to do this all night. Focused. <laughs> okay. The camera was focused on me the whole time you were I speaking. Know. So I was making faces. That's fine. Okay, fantastic. There, I'll put it back on both of us. You're so pretty. I'm pretty. I'm so pretty. I just like looking at you. I think you're the better one to look at. I think that you're incredibly wrong. Both of us. Uh, some people don't even pretend to be in love or act like they're in love. They make it very clear that they are using somebody. And I always say you can either stand your ground or you can be the ground that somebody walks on. Yeah, or be the ground that somebody stands on. You can stand your ground or be the ground that somebody stands on. Ooh. 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 Is that like marking territory? I mean, peeing on them would be. I was thinking of like staking a flag, but yeah, you're right. Guys, we have a sandwich artist in the chat. A sandwich artist? Yeah, somebody said that I'm at Subway. I'm working at Subway listening live. Oh, I love sandwiches. Okay. Uh, everybody knows a couple who they know they should not be together. Like, they're not compatible at all. And the only reason they are together is because... Comfort, convenience. Comfort, convenience. They can get something from each other. They're very, like, publicly PDA. Like, they're into each other, but they're not compatible. We know couples like that. Everybody knows a couple like that. Uh, many people will just have sex for self-pleasure, and that makes me feel slimy. That very tender swipe culture. People who rack up three and four hundred body counts. That really is just... Buy a dildo. not going to say a Fight Club reference. I'm not going to say a Fight Club reference. I'm not going to say a Fight Club reference. Well, now I'm intrigued because how would you tie in Fight Club to? Because in, in the event of a dildo, we can never imply ownership. We must refer to it as a dildo, never your dildo. Couldn't just let it go, could you? I'm, what do you I'm so confused. What? When he gets off the plane, he lost his baggage. His oh, baggage was, was yeah. vibrating and not ticking. 
throwers don't worry about ticking. Yeah. Because most bombs don't tick. Hmm. I've seen that movie a lot. I can tell. I love watching that movie, Stone. It's absolutely fantastic. Blows my mind every time watching this man live his life like that. Wow. All right. To keep any love, sexual or not, going, we need to go back to the friendship discussed in the first chapter. Unlike lovers or even many family members, Good friends can keep their friendships going for a lifetime because they do not indulge in the fantasies of ownership. Oh, wow. Imagine that. You don't own your friends. To begin with, they do not become good friends if they have little or nothing in common. If you meet somebody and you go, oh, no, thank you. You're not going to go out of your way to interact with that person again. That's how I gauge my interactions. If it's not a pleasant one, I go, no, thank you. I'm good. And I just tootle away. You tootle away? Tootle away. Probably holding my Starbucks if I got it that day. (laughs) I discuss compatibility in detail later, but here to test if your love is likely to last, ask yourself, how much do I have in common with the person I think I'm falling in love with and even beginning a sexual relationship with? I'd say I have a lot of stuff in common with you. We have diverse interests. I enjoy listening to things that you're into that I don't comprehend. It's expanding my universe. I like that, that we're not totally the same on everything, yeah. but the larger areas we're pretty compatible in. And I thought that before we started having sex. Why are you looking at me like that? Because we had a couple of years of friendship. Right. A year of courting before we even started dating. Mm. Like our our foundation was long solidified and cured before we started building on it. Oh yeah, that shit's made out of like marble. Mm-hmm. Fucking limestone. Mm. Yep. Especially ask yourself, if I were not hormonally attracted to this person, would he or she be someone I would enjoy as a friend? If you weren't attracted to me, would would you enjoy me as a friend? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. I too would enjoy you as a friend. If the answer is no, there is little chance for that love to succeed. Hormones get us together. They do not keep us together. Right. Shit takes work. Mm Mm-hmm. Somebody in the chat said that they don't think that body count is important or anyone's business to judge, and that is completely irrelevant to the conversation at hand. I don't understand why that was even posted. Oh, it's because I said something. I know that you said something, but we weren't judging anyone, right. and we weren't discussing anybody's personal life. So why would that get thrown into the conversation that we're having on in terms of that mm-hmm. statement? Probably triggered them. Probably. Anyways, AJ just sent that. I felt the need to say something. Okay. Well, not. I'm not sorry. No, everybody didn't say anything offensive. It it wouldn't have mattered if you did. Even if that was your opinion and that was their opinion, you're entitled to have your opinions. Yeah. You don't have to agree. And who gives a shit if you guys are offended or were offended? Right. That's an us or them problem. Offense is, is, you know, a feeling that you're choosing to feel in the moment. I I, I like the idea. Um, I, I like the idea that we can have intelligent disagreements. Mm -hmm. and still respect and have love for one another. I don't give a shit what people will do with their lives. If, if, if somebody does or believes something that I'm vehemently against and they're still respectful to me, I will still be respectful to that. Be to them. I will still be respectful to them. Right. And we can be civil and have a great, you know, back and forth. And, and, and that's dope. Yeah. But there's a limit to what somebody might accept in their life. Right. And that's okay too. Anyways, anyways, I would like to to proceed with the book because otherwise we're going to side rail really hard on that topic. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. For a loving and sexual relationship to last, most of us also need a life of our own. Not a sexual life, but a social or recreational life separate from the relationship. Read that again because there you go. For a loving and sexual relationship to last, most of us also need a life of our own. Not a sexual life 
but a life of social or recreational separate from the relationship. And why is that? Without looking at the book. Why is that? Why is that? Because when you spend 24-7 with someone, they're going to get under your skin. You need a break from each other. It's it, Yes. Yes, that's part of it. But you get something different from every relationship that you have in life. Yeah. Something different from your mom than you get from your best friend. Mm-hmm. Something from your best friend than you get from your woman. Those personal relationships are filling needs in your brain in communication and social acceptance that you would not be getting solely from your person. Mm-hmm. When people isolate themselves, become stay-at-home moms and, and eliminate social circles and don't go out and like socialize anymore and don't reach out to people. Right. And don't try to get their kids into programs. And like all they do is focus on staying at home and taking care of the kids. And in six months, wonder why they've isolated themselves into depression mm-hmm. and they no longer enjoy their partner's company. They no longer enjoy their kids like they fucking hate their life. It's because they've removed that social aspect and they're not getting their needs met that their partner wasn't fulfilling anyways. Right. That shit is super fucking important. Mm -hmm. That's why I do have, I still actually have friends that I talk to on a regular basis, even if it's about stupid shit. Yeah. Sean and I talk about really, really stupid conversations. I believe that. Yeah. It's like putting two 12 year olds with a little bit of money in a lunchroom together and talking about their toys and making fart jokes and flicking boogers at each other. Yeah. It is fucking childish nonsense. But he's the only person in my life that I get that from. Mm-hmm. I get a very different different conversation when I talk to Dakota mm-hmm. than I do when I talk to Zach and Sean. So like those people in my lives all fill needs that I have. And without them, our relationship would suffer mm-hmm. because those are parts of me that I would have to suppress or no longer indulge in. Does that make sense? Like you yeah, need Yeah, because that. I'm not going to be that person flicking right. boogers and shit with you. Right. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I, I will fart joke and shit in front of you. And I'm mm-hmm. definitely a, a bigger goofball in front of you than anyone else. But the conversations are not young boy child of shit. I need that. Mm-hmm. And if I need to have a tactical man conversation, I have people for that. There's just certain things that you're not able to provide. And I'm not able to provide you. If you wanted to talk to me about your plants or your fingernails, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I'll listen. Mm-hmm. Listen, you talk about that shit all day long. Yeah. I just got no feedback for you. Husbands and wives need their need to have their own interests, hobbies, and friends that each pursue separately. Yep. Can you indulge in those interests without fear of criticism or complaints? That's massive. Mm-hmm. That's part of that. Right. Yep. We do so easily and naturally with good friends and among members of a caring family... Most of us need to learn to do so as easily in marriage to try to not stop a partner from enjoying these respites is destructive to the relationship. Depending on your mate for everything is asking more than what most relationships can provide. Right. Here's a thought on all of that. How many times have we gone out with groups of people and see a side of somebody that you've never seen before? And you'd be like, Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. Right. It happens because that's a part of them that's reserved for that person that they're around. And that's Mm -hmm. how they act with that person because that person is fulfilling that need in them. Right. It happens. You and I have gone out in public and afterwards been like, I have never seen somebody do that shit before. And it's changed my entire perspective on that person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It has happened. Yep. Somebody said, where is the next shirt drop happening? I'm glad you asked in about 10 minutes on to be better co or to be better dot co. Ego Kills Talent will be live in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. To be better, dot co. Also, the um, Have You Checked In Lately shirt is on sale for $12 until it's gone. Mm-hmm. That that will also be effective on the website. Yep. I enjoyed that part of the book. Yeah. Yeah, because that made me reevaluate my, my social circle. It made me understand the needs of... Um, keeping people in my life, even if I don't talk to them very often Mm -hmm. because I am getting a need filled and so are they. So like having that, uh, it made me, it just made me reevaluate certain relationships. I'm going to end it with that. I got nothing else. Okay. I mean, I do. I just don't want to go on a tangent. Gotcha. When we think of love, we tend to think more of getting it than giving it. Ooh. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Processing. Um, yes. People like to complain. You stopped by the store and you didn't get me my favorite candy bar, but you got yours. Right. Okay. Got you. 
When was the last time you went out of your way to do that for them? Right. That that comes down to a decision, though, because when people are right. courting and dating, that happens. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm going to the store. You need anything? Uh, I'm going to run by and get Dairy Queen. You want a blizzard? Like, there is that back and forth that happens a lot in the courting phase and dating phase when everything was new and shiny. That selfless becomes selfish at some point. <coughs> is that something that needs your attention? Um, kind of. The purple in my hair matches the purple on this can. <laughs> That's funny. I have to put my phone on Do Not Disturb now. Zach, I apologize for the amount of emails you're about to get. Jen, same thing. It has begun. What? What emails? The sleeper has awakened. I'm spooked. What's happening? Did I miss something? No. Nope. Did I? No. I feel like you're fibbing. No, but I just can't tell you right now. So you're going to have to wait for about eight more minutes. I'm trusting you. This is me putting faith in my man and I'm no longer questioning because he gave me an answer. Okay. Even though my anxiety is peaking, I am choosing to not give into that primal urge of satiating it. Because you've never given me a reason to not trust you. I'm glad you're doing a really good job at convincing yourself, babe. I'm not convincing myself. I'm talking myself through it out loud, and that might help people. Okay. God damn it, dude. (laughs) Difficulties also incur in non-sexual love. Members of families, especially children and parents, often want more than the other is willing to give. When they do, and one or both parties are external control or are using external control, the family is often torn apart. Well, I asked mom, and mommy told me it was fine after dad told me no. But mom said it was cool. So, and then there's an argument later on between the mom and the dad. Well, you are so hard on the kids over everything. She's only 16 once. Right, but it's the principle of things. She really shouldn't be out until 3 o'clock in the morning on a Friday night. Right. Oh, my glasses are filthy. (laughs) So I admitted something in the women's group, and it just happened on the live. I have this thing where my hands just stop working and I drop shit. And I don't know why it happens. And it's something that I've just accepted in my life. Do you remember the night that I was making sliders and I dropped your plate on the floor and shattered it and your dinner was ruined? It's because my hand stopped working. You got a case of the dropsies. It happens. uh, I'm embarrassed that it just happened on the live. There is no way to prevent this rupture as long as all parties involved try to control the others. Unfortunately, these are the behaviors that most family members use when they start to disagree. There is nothing that I can suggest to solve family or any other difficulties that have to do with giving and getting love except giving up external control and practice, starting to practice choice theory. We hear so many times across multiple emails of his mom just won't stay out of our marriage. She wants to say on everything. He's told her that she's crossing a line and she just keeps showing up unannounced. That's where that she's trying to exert her control. And when there's that pushback, that's when that rupture starts to happen. Right. And until she is willing to give up the control she's trying to exert, the relationship will never be repaired. Right. Until the person is willing to give up their control over the situation, the relationship will never be repaired. That is the answer for everybody who's like, I love my mom, but she does all of this stuff and I feel like I can't live my life. Right. How how do I fix the relationship? It's not on you. Refer to what I just repeated. Yep.
you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, nope. Oh, I'm getting hungry again. Someone said, shouldn't be involving external family members in household business. Yep, I agree. Yep. AJ, there was 160 shirts on this order. I'm hoping to see them all sell out between 9 and 10 p.m. Could you imagine? It would be fucking gangster because the next time we order shirts, we would be able to do more of them. Yeah, that would be dope. Yeah, the last time we did shirts, they sold out in, what was it? 22 hours or something like that yeah yeah it was less than a day less than a day one day we'll get to the point that we're flying off with like a thousand shirts sold in minutes that'd be so gangster we gotta get we gotta get cooler with the designs yeah yeah (laughs) jenna said she's hungry do not order taco bell (laughs) fuck taco bell i was so devastated Are we done with the book? No. no. Do you want to be done with the book? No, let's continue. I'd like to get through the chapter before we call it a night. Many humans admit that they have enough of everything a person, person could possibly want, but still want the pleasure associated with getting more, even though getting more often means others get less. Greed. Greed. Yeah. I was a really shitty little kid. Everyone has it. I would be at like an outing with a bunch of other kids and everyone's like, you can get one slice of pizza you can go back and get one more slice of pizza. There's only enough pizza for everybody to get exactly two slices. And my little smug ass would take my first piece and I'd like trot off. Then I would go back and I would sneak two slices. And I'd be like, fuck some other kid. (laughs) (laughs) Looking back, that kid was devastated. That could have been like that one kid's dinner. And my fat, 12 year old ass I was really big at 12 I was like 189 pounds 190 pounds I was big what are you smirking at because I'm an asshole okay I'm an asshole it's hard to stay friends with someone who is consumed with greed and status We want to win, to ruin things, to have it our way, and to tell others what to do. See them do it, and have them do it the way we know is best. I disagree with that. Well, that's people who are, like, greedy, who want to have that control. Right. Well, I'm greedy. Right. I don't believe in enough money. Yeah. Or enough anything that I want. Mm Mm-hmm. But I want those around me to succeed and, and, like, have that healthy competition to, like, grow and... I thrive in that. It makes me a better person. And even though they can be just as greedy, as long as we're not trying to fuck each other in the process. Right. That's good. Like, you know what I mean? That, that, that makes those around you better. That's what the, that's the entire point of the men group, the men, the men's group that we had. Yeah. Was to try to help each other level up so that we can all feed off of each other. And like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure that that's, that he wasn't talking about people like me, but. Right. We're almost 94,000, guys. 93,674. That's insane. Yep. Oh, people are saying they got their shirts. Oh, Nine o'clock. Let's get them shirt orders in. I'm literally post-Taco Bell (laughs) suffering right now, but y'all are getting me through it. I'm glad you're getting through it. Taco Belly ache. I love Taco Bell. In the pursuit of power, many people have no qualms about doing whatever they believe is necessary to get it, even if it means sacrificing a marriage or a relationship with a child or parent. That I agree with. Or destroying a business competitor. Even murder is not beyond the pale for people obsessed by power. Somebody just asked if the blah, blah, blah shirt was going to be restocked. Nope. No, that one's gone. Our shirts are limited. Once they've been ordered and sold out, they are sold out. Correct. We will not be doing that again. Maybe in like 10 years, we'll do a throwback. So, I read... The people have no qualms about doing whatever they believe is necessary to get it, even if it means sacrificing a marriage or a relationship with a child or parent or destroying a business competitor. Right. 
And I said, I agree. Yeah. Because that is how most people try to level up. That's why they refer to people as crabs in a bucket. Okay. Crabs in a bucket? Yeah. Because if a crab starts to crawl out, one another crab will grab it and pull it back down. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. Like they, if I'm stuck, you're stuck? Yeah, they won't They won't let each other escape. Wow. Huh. Makes me uncomfy. Yep. As infants, once we get a taste of power through seeing our parents or others jump to attention to give us what we want, our need for more power starts to take over. By the time we are teenagers, power pushes us far beyond what we would do if our only motivation was to survive and get loving attention. So there is <laughs> that point that I'm actually trying to teach the kids now that you don't get what you want. That is not how the world works. Your legs are tired. I'm tired. Are you going to, who's going to carry me? You're tired, bro. I'm tired, bro. <laughs> like the kids are really starting to hit me with that, but I'm tired. Like, especially in the morning when we're getting up and getting ready for school right. and we have to get in the shower and it's like six o'clock and our son's hit me with Mommy, I'm tired. I'm like, bro, same. Like, you think <laughs> I just live awake? <laughs> so in personal relations, coercion doesn't work any better for the powerful than it does for anyone else. Because the power tend to use it so much, it may actually work to their disadvantage in their marriages and within their families. Powerful men used to stay with their wives, but it was unusual for them to be faithful. You in the middle of something? I'm listening to you, but I am Instagramming because I forgot to schedule the post earlier. Oh. It was unusual for men who empower to stay faithful to their wives. I, okay. I am absolutely listening to you. Okay. Today... Many more of them divorce rather than pretend that their marriages are successful because today the law protects wives who divorce much more than it did in the past. Many more unhappy wives now divorce their powerful husbands. The powerful need choice theory for happiness as much or more than other people. Because of their power, if they embrace this theory, the whole society could benefit. Did that thing just say that divorce protects women? More than it did, yes. In um, levels of power. Thoughts, opinions, feelings. That m women will marry men with money and then divorce them because they're bored and take half their shit. Yeah, right. that's not protection. That's 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 manipulating the laws. Oh, it says the shirts are short. No way. It's been five minutes. Did we sell out the shirts? The, I doubt it. I highly doubt all those shirts are sold. Well, let me buy anything saying T-shirts are sold out. Hang on. Checking inventory because now I got to know. I doubt it though. Yeah, there's 92 left. 31 of the have you checked in and 92 of the ego kills talent. So we've sold 70 shirts. In five minutes. In five minutes. Impressive. There's currently... 13 small, 14 medium, 25 large, 23 extra large, 12 2X, and 4 4X left. So they are definitely not sold out. We are not sold out of any size. I keep reading. Okie dokie. All right. So when we don't feel free to express ourselves, or if we do and no one will listen to us, our creative... Creativity may cause us pain or even make us sick. The more we are free and able to satisfy our needs in a way that does not stop another person from satisfying his or hers, the golden rule, which is don't do unto others as you would have others do unto you. The more we are able to use our creativity, not only for our own benefit, but for the benefits of others. Creative people who feel free to create are rarely selfish and they get a lot of pleasure from sharing their gift. I think an example of that is the podcast. Yeah. 
we, we have a form of influence in society now. And I like to think that we're doing it in a way that benefits people. I'd like to think so too. I actually think that they all agree because they tell us all the time that what we're doing is changing lives. Right. So in implementing choice theory, we are showing that people who have a form of power can use this, embracing this theory to help the society as a whole. We are literally proving this book right. Yep. Crazy. So he asked in the first chapter, how can I figure out how to be free to live my life the way I want to live it and still get along well with the people I need? And that is letting go of power. So power destroys love. No one wants to be dominated, no matter how much those who dominate protest their love. Love also means working out how much, uh, working out how much to be together. There is less room for freedom in a good relationship than many of us want. Over time, these amounts will change. If they cannot be successfully worked out, the relationship may fail. Did all that make sense to you? Yep. So in saying that, when there is a constant, we have to be together, like if you leave the house, I'm coming with you or I'm going to have a panic attack. Right. There, there's not that room for freedom. You have restricted them from being able to experience anything by themselves at that point. So that's what he means, that love also means working on how much to be together. If somebody needs space, they need their space. You have to let go of that control a little bit. A little bit. Negotiation is necessary whenever there is a major change in the marriage. One or the other may need more power or freedom when a partner or both partners starts or stop working. Children come, jobs change, they move to a new city, they buy an expensive home, and especially when one or both partners retire. Oh, man. For example, if the husband retires and is now around the house all day, the wife who had not worked or had retired earlier feels suffocated because now she's accustomed to being home alone for eight to 10 hours a day. And now all of a sudden he's here all the time. Yep. Because her entire environment's changed. Right. You know, there's a lot of people that don't do well that Mm -hmm. have had careers their entire lives that retire and have to be around each other constantly because there's exactly what he just said, obviously, because that's what we're fucking talking about. But they, they realize that they don't like each other. Yeah. The fact that you and I have the time together that we have is not normal. I know it's really not. And the fact that we don't argue and like we don't have tiffs and like there's not drama between us. Mm -hmm. We're we're away from each other less than two hours a day. Yeah. Literally less than two hours a day. I mean, some days it's more like Sundays. It's like five or six hours. Right. Because you take the kids to the park. But like that's the longest in the entire week that we're not not near each other. Right. It's because we're friends. Mm-hmm. It's because we get, we we actually genuinely like each other's company. Yeah. Setting ourselves up for success, motherfuckers. Sorry. Put a lot of sugar. I can tell. He now begins to intrude in parts of her life where he had shown no interest before. If that marriage is to avoid a crisis, the couple must renegotiate the need for freedom. It's okay to say, hey, I need some space. Yep. Instead of becoming shitty or passive aggressive or, hey, babe, what's the matter? Nothing. I'm fine. Yeah. Communication. Yes. Got to talk about it. And we're back. That's it. Oh. End of chapter two going on chapter three next week. And you did that in two hours and 11 minutes plus the debauchery. We oh. have super chats to read. Oh, my back hurts. So AJ bad. was so excited to send those that he got. He sent them prematurely. He had a premature detonation. Mm hmm. All right, starting with my man Jordan, four ninety nine. Right. I'm not going to say the amounts. Moving forward, I'm not saying the amounts unless they're over fifty bucks. Okay. Have to work, but wanted to tell you I appreciate and love being a, a small part of what you do. Thank you. I love that. Jennifer said, "Just sending lots of love and appreciation." 
Great Wolf Tactical said, hi, Michelle. <laughs> Zach uh, became a member for three more months that says, I love rock and roll, so put another dime in the jukebox, baby. Oh, that's not the one that was stuck in my head. It's, um, I hate myself for loving you. Can't bring me from the day that I do. Lillian said, you changed, you all changed my world. Thank you. Love that. Spring Allison said, awesome information. As always, you too. I'm Love pretty it. sure she's in Discord now. Okay. Christy B, welcome to Early Access. Danger Daddy Works. Uh, I really appreciate y'all. We really appreciate you. Thank and you the for super being chat. here. Yeah. Uh, P Manly G, do I need to look less intense? That got me. Uh, Danielle Gear. Welcome to exclusive live streams. Vanessa Ruiz, subway worker watching from work. I'm hungry. Um, what? That was it. That's it? That's it. Why'd you chuckle at? Because AJ sent another message that had nothing to do with anything. <laughs> when I was looking at you earlier and you were like, what? I'm not going to be anxious. I gave Discord a 10 minute head start on the t-shirts. So I had to put my phone on Do Not Disturb because my phone was going fucking ape shit. Oh, and that's gotcha. why I was like, Zach and Jen, Do Not Disturb is going to be a thing because your phones are about to go st start going berserk. But I didn't want to say that in the chat because the whole point of, of the early release to Discord and Patreon was to give them a 10 minute head start. Yeah. Trying to do right by, by our loyal patrons. Michelle needed my phone. I had to send them. That's what I was laughing at. Mm. all right guys we've got like they're not the shirts are not sold out why does everybody keep saying that i just looked there's 70 shirts left i'm sorry 74 ego kills talent shirts and 27 have you checked in still on the website Ooh, shout out from argentina welcome don't cry for me uh, we still have 10 smalls, 12 mediums, 23 large, 17 extra large, 11 2X, and 1 4X. 1 4X. Yep. All right. Uh, apparently, Jenna, feed the algorithm, $2.20. Love it. We have any questions that you guys would like to get into that can be in 150 characters or less and not vague. I saw somebody earlier ask what the email format should be. Highly, yeah. highly detailed. That's the format. Oh. If you're having problems communicating, we want to know what you said, what they said, their facial response, their body language, what their breath smelled like. I want all the details. I want a dessert. The other one shouldn't be on the website anymore. I made it hidden. So for you guys who are clicking on the red one, that one has been out of stock because that was a very, very limited run as a trial run. Um, All right. For everybody listening and looking on the website, you have to click on the purple Ego Kills Talent. Yep. I don't think they can see the other one anymore. It should be gone. Let's see. Can I order dessert? You can do whatever you want, babe. Mm. I like when you call me babe. Would you like a dessert? From where? I don't know. Let's find out. I haven't gotten that far. If you've lost sexual attraction to your person, you still love them, is it possible to get that back? Yes. What is your intimacy at? If you guys are still intimate and you're not having sex, why? Right. There's aren't a difference you between sex? being in love with somebody and, and like having that intimacy. Right. Very much a thing. <gasps> Sweet. Ah, she said Peach's dessert money. Nice. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. You're right. Sweet Caroline. Bah, bah, bah. Settle, non-settle flirting between you two is super cute. Oh, I'm subtle? Subtle, non-subtle flirting? Is that? I don't know. It only gives one option for me. That's because I hid the other one. Peaches, you look gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Me. Yep. Brandy Joe said that. I would I would appreciate you guys not flirting with my wife. <laughs> 
What if we sent a small, but left? What if we sent a, um, an email? Wow, I'm fucking blind. Yeah. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Why would you send a small? <laughs> this may have to happen. <laughs> Kidding. No. <laughs> What if we sent an email but left out stuff that was advised to be left out, and now it seems it may be lacking a bit of detail? I'm worried mine has gone straight into the not reading it box. If you sent a bunch of detail about SADV or any kind of child abuse, yeah, I, that's exactly where it went. Um, if you left that stuff out, good. But you should still have a whole lot of information about your email. If you guys have an argument, here's a prime example. If Peaches and I had an argument and I was sending an email to us, I would say... We were driving in the car. We were having a normal morning. Everything was going really well. I thought she was kind of off a little bit. I asked her what was going on. She said X, Y, Z. I responded with X, Y, Z. And then I noticed a, a noticeable shift in her body language. Mm -hmm. She immediately became tense. She said X, Y, Z again. And I would tell me what the fuck is being said and how each other are responding in the moment so that I can go, okay, here's what they're telling you. This is the breakdown. Those are the details. We don't need to know what happened to you when you were 13. Right. That's not going to help the fucking conversation of what's happening when you're 45. Real shit. Wait, don't look away from me. Stop playing with my heartstrings. What are you talking about? Busting out the glasses. I might need these. <laughs> no. You want the glasses? You know. You want the glasses? You know I do. I'm going to put them on for just a second. Okay. Just a second. Go. Put the camera on you so they can't see. <laughs> oh. I actually can read better this way. I just. Tell me I'm a good girl. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. I have a request for later tonight. Can I, can I put in a formal submission? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Big Danny said, don't forget to hit the like button and share. Huh? You're gonna put it back on you. Oh yeah. Forgot I was here. Yep. Um, Liz said, my boyfriend and I are new to the content, but love y'all. Thank you. I'm glad that you guys are here. I'm glad that you're here on the channel and supporting. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. We are on the road to a hundred grand. We are almost there. Uh, Hunter said, how do we feel about long distance relationship if... It's because your SO wants to make more money elsewhere, but for a whole year, and he does not want you to come with. Why doesn't he want you? Right. How long? See this? Okay. So here's, here's the detail thing that we were talking about in the emails. Right. How long have you been together? Are you married? How long? How, what was the relationship like before he decided to go there? Were you having marital issues? Has there been previous infidelity? Has mm -hmm. he told you that he's unhappy in the marriage? Like these things matter. It's not as simple as he's going out of town and just doesn't want me to come. Yeah. Because a year, that's a lease. That is a lease. You got to sign a lease somewhere. Why don't you fucking move there, live there for a year and decide whether you want to stay there and then move back or if that's where you're going to relocate to because he can make more money. Right? Is mm -hmm. that valid? Okay. I would say that's valid. Yeah. All right. Hannah said, my husband is in police academy Monday through Friday out of town in dorms and I'm in school full time. Monday through Saturday, 8 to 4.30, and I feel awful not cleaning more. Advice. Thank you so much. I need you to read that again. My husband is in police academy Monday through Friday, okay. out of town. Uh, I guess he's staying in dorms, so he's not there at all throughout the week. And I'm in school full time Monday through Saturday from 8 to 4.30, and I feel awful not cleaning more. Advice. If you get out at 4.30, dedicate time from 4.30 to 6.30 to cleaning. Oh, yeah. Two hours. Every day. So this is what I would do. When I was working, this is how I structured it. When my kids were at their dad's house, I would get home late. <laughs> I was getting home 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, Friday and Saturday nights. So I would get home. I would shower, do my skincare routine at night, put on my jammies, put on a show in the background, and I would clean until like 1130 or midnight. Yeah. And just like get that shit done. And then one of my days off, I would just dedicate to deep cleaning. We got a $50 super chat, but there's nothing there other than a chest with, a, you know, a, a trunk with coins coming out of it. On the cleaning advice, if you're gone from 8 to 4.30 and mm -hmm. he's gone all week long, your house should be relatively clean. Yeah, it shouldn't be that much going on. Yeah, you clean one day, clean mm -hmm. Monday when he leaves and then spot clean the rest of the week. That should be super easy. Hunter said, but you said to do short, short 
questions on here. That's because you only get 160 question, uh, characters. Right. But me saying that, this would be the perfect opportunity to explain the detail in the email so that other people who are emailing can understand what we're looking for. I'm going to use you as examples. M using me? It, who, the, whoever oh. Hunter is. I would rather you guys uh, have the information than not. I'm not calling you out directly. Ba -da -ba -da. Someone said, and she doodled away. Doodle, doodle. It was supposed to be waddle. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but I said toodle. Oh. 68 shirts left. We sold 100 shirts Stop in it. 22 minutes. We That's got a, insane. We got a dollar super chat. Thank you. Um, Daniel Gear, Danielle Gear said, do you guys think you will ever travel for conferences or whatever? I know you have kiddos, so maybe not. Um, we've actually talked about doing meet and greets. Mm-hmm. Um, we have talked about the potential for seminars. Somebody actually emailed us today and said that they work in the concert venue uh, thing. I saw that. And would like to know if we ever consider doing like venues yeah. and doing live shows. That would be gangster. That would it, be dope. It, that would be, that would definitely be like a sit down and interview couple kind of things. Oh, yeah. But I, I really do want to do meet and greets. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do. I, I Obviously, it's got to be in a very public setting and we there's a lot of logistics there. Yeah. But if we, if we did like a... a I don't know, an East Coast tour and just stopped in one city in every state that like is relevant. People would travel. I, I, I do believe that there would be people that were, would be willing to travel a couple hours to see us. Right. And we could keep the venue small, sell tickets for it or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how that would even look. You know, we could do email submissions for the areas that we're going to specifically. Yeah. And pick like two or three of them and do live email readings from that town. Yeah. Yep. Wild. That, that would could, actually be kind of cool. That could cause issues though. What do you mean? And be like, oh my God, is that Becky's story? Oh yeah. Did you hear about what's going on with Becky? That sounds like Becky. Oh, busy body ass motherfuckers. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Katrina Shields. Um, I'm gonna do chilies. Okie dokie. Oh, is that the place that's got the big ass cookie? Yeah. I want that. You want that? Yep. Would you like anything else? No. Okie dokie. Uh, Katrina Shields said, "Everybody buy the shirts, even if the design isn't 100% you. The material is ridiculously soft. Oh, yes, yeah. they are. They are <sighs> tri blend fabric." So comfy. I actually really like the shirts. I have texture issues. I, I have actually had t-shirts make me have a panic attack. Yeah, I've had, like, I've cut shirts off of me because I felt like I couldn't breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Waddle, waddle. And then you waddled away. Angela said, I can help set it up in Nashville. I have plenty of contacts. Nashville. Boston. Please come to Wisconsin. Oh my god, I would love to go to Wisconsin. Although they were supposed to be like a, a Wisconsin cheese fair or something, and they didn't have cheese sculptures, which was a massive letdown. And I did a skit and I posted it in the women's group. Yeah. And they thought it was funny. I had fun with it. Hunter said, sorry if this has been answered already, but is he the stepdad or the dad? Not that it matters, but this is the first time hearing Peaches say my kid's dad in third person like that. I am not the father, but I am the father. I am a dad. We are bonus bonus parents he's the kids have a bonus mom and a bonus dad mm -hmm. and all four of us refer to them as our kids yeah very rarely do they get spoken of as a, a third party like that mm -hmm. um we we i don't know we we co-parent well like you know kids got kids got to do a life the only reason i said it in that context is because at that time i was living by myself right right well it matters it was very relevant to what you were talking about right so would you, when we go to Vegas, would you like to meet up with any of our fans in Vegas? Because you, you know that, that there, there's a lot of people in that, around that area that listen to us. Yes. Only if we're doing something cool though. Like what? Like windsurfing. I don't think desert. that you can do that in the desert. I've seen it. Like you can pay to go out there and like they provide the wind boards and shit. In Vegas? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Uh, okay, that's the first I've ever heard of that. Doesn't well, mean that's not a thing. It's just the first I've heard of it. Well, we should look into it. Okay. But I like to do something like that, something cool. I just had my first panic attack last night. Thought I was dying. My husband is scared. Any advice? Find out what's causing you anxiety. Yep. Jordan, you're absolutely right. When it comes to co-parenting, the kids have to matter most. Mm 
Our kids have it so made. Zip line or dune buggy? Best Vegas action for real. Ooh, a dune buggy would be fun. I don't know. I've I've flown out of Las Vegas into the Grand Canyon and had dinner and flown back to Vegas in a helicopter. You had dinner in the Grand Canyon? In the Grand Canyon. Yep. Yep. I would love to do that. Can we do that? We can. I, I, I don't know. I, Vegas is a big deal to me. I, I believe that Vegas is one of those centrally located things to so much dope shit when it comes to photography. You just got to be willing to drive. Sometimes it's three or four hours, but mm-hmm. you just got to be willing to drive. Hot air balloon. Yeah, I wouldn't do the hot air balloon. Big Danny said, Chris is just full of experiences. I've lived I've lived a very interesting life. Yeah. I have. I, I'm one of those people that like have spent way more than I should on shit mm-hmm. and I don't regret it. And I've put myself in really horrible situations sometimes spending money. Yeah. But I got experiences and memories that I can't, I wouldn't have been able to have otherwise. Like, yeah. you know, that's more important to me. And that's why like when we talk about like gifts, I don't want gifts from you. I want experiences. Let's go travel. Let's fucking do something we've never done before. Like, mm-hmm. I want those memories. I want to be able to talk about it 30 years from now. Like, you remember that time that, you know, I farted in a, a two hundred thousand dollars sports car with the windows up and the heat on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just that's so dick. <laughs> it, <right>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of my dopest memories to look back on is like seeing the Eiffel Tower lit up at night. Yeah, I have that ingrained, engraved ingrained ingrained in my brain like i had i could never go back there yeah. like that's that's an experience i'm a treasure forever oh man gremlin girl new member again for three months just spent a hundred dollars on shirts uk thanks for the drop holy shit I love that people are supporting us from all over the world. I really wish that it wasn't so fucking expensive to ship to you guys. Yeah. There's currently 67 Ego Kills Talent shirts left in 21 of the Have You Checked In shirts. It's crazy. We're definitely going to sell it in the first 24 hours. We went oh, to yeah. 100 shirts in less than an hour. Yeah. 30 minutes, 100, almost 100 shirts in 30 minutes. I want to go to Gettysburg. Yeah, for what? Yeah. Just walk around the historic sites and go to the field and lay in the grass. Why are you looking at me like that? Yeah, it's just a very, you got it all figured out already. You know exactly what you want to do. Yeah. I'm very big on touching things and feeling energies and having a- an understanding and appreciation for the past. Yeah. Yeah. Ashley said, do one in Southwest Florida. Do what in Southwest Florida? A meet and greet? Joke's on you. We live in Southwest Florida. Every day is me in Southwest Florida. Just okay. I'm not even gonna try that because there's too much going on in that name. Y'all spoke hobbies earlier. We've spoken about it many times. I take care of the house, landscaping, maintenance, dinner, and children. He works full time. When I ask for quality time, intimate time, he says we did during my hobby. What? Can you scroll up so I can read that, please? Oh, I I apologize. I forgot it's on a different screen. You all spoke hobbies earlier. We've spoken about it many times. I take care of the house, landscaping, maintenance, dinner, and children. He works full time. When I ask for quality time or intimate times, he said we did that during my hobby. So. What's your hobby? One, there is a inadequate division of labor in that house. Oh, yeah. There's a whole lot of blue jobs being done by her that shouldn't be. Um, as for quality time, intimate time, maybe you need to explain to him what your quality intimate time looks like and that your hobby is your time. And that if he chooses to do that with you, that's exciting. And it's nice to have that extra quality time, but that's not how that works. Right. (coughs) Scroll down to the bottom, please. Thank you. Your chair is very squeaky. I'm so sorry. Going to need all the WD-40. Um, let's 
Somebody asked again, when will you drop blah, blah, blah? We won't. Yeah, that's not happening. Sh shirts are limited. Once they're sold out, they're sold out. Mm -hmm. um, Carla said, I remember one episode you said that you were a libertarian. Is Peaches also a libertarian? You also a libertarian, babe? Yeah. Yep. Who giggles? What? I giggle when you say Florida. When who says Florida? Uh, Angela said there's ghost hunting in Gettysburg. See, I'd be, I'd be willing to do that one with you. Yeah. Because I haven't experienced that one yet. Hopefully it's more than a history lesson. Yeah. Those fucking ghost tours in St. Augustine are the biggest load of bullshit. Yeah. Yep. Advice for a woman learning how to be submissive and nurturing newly in traditional roles. It is, I can't say this is a thing for all women. For me, it comes very naturally to be nurturing and compassionate and understanding and soft and gentle. I want to be warm. You know, I want to be the fireplace of the family. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you just said that comes naturally. Right. Did it always come naturally? Like, was that always a thing? Because you were very masculine at one point. I would say I definitely suppressed it. I didn't think anybody deserved it. I knew that's what I wanted. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, I didn't think anyone was deserving of it. So I definitely suppressed it. But I was always that way. Thoughts on co-parenting with new girlfriend who apparently wants to be friends but doesn't want to be in a situation where she faces me? What? That uh, doesn't make sense. Amy Vaughn just wrote Chris. I don't know what that was in reference to. The way you say Florida. Florida? Florida. She said that you probably didn't grow up here. You sound like a northerner saying it. I sound like that? I've lived in Florida since 1980. Right. I was born at Bayfront in St. Petersburg. I've been yeah. here my entire life. Yeah, I've lived here since I was about five. Moved away for a few years, came back. ATVs. What are some ways to work on intimacy, both for male and female perspective? You guys need to know that yourselves. You need to know your relationships. I don't. That's a very opinionated statement. Mm. What are some ways to work on intimacy, both for male and female? Make your partner first. Pay attention to what they're telling you. Listen to their criticisms because mm -hmm. the criticisms are their biggest complaints about what's going on in your life and the things that you can fix. Where it's their biggest ask. You work too much. That's them saying, I need more quality time. You never listen to me. It means that you're not really responsive when having conversations or you're emotionally devoid. Yeah. You, you listen to what your partner's saying and get to the root of it. And then once you've had the conversations and there's no more rough turmoil between you, then the intimacy should start returning. Mm -hmm. I would say provide them a version of yourself that you wouldn't give to somebody else. Like I've said before, if you tell me that I'm beautiful in our most intimate moments when you're viewing me in a way that nobody else is allowed to view me and you go and say that to some random woman on the internet, it doesn't mean anything. Right. Yeah. It loses all of its value. So be selective on the way you speak to your partner versus the way you speak to the outside world. Somebody said, I have a spine injury and can't like take out the trash or do laundry. Chris, would you feel weird about having to do those traditional things like laundry? You? Me. So I had a surgery and I was out of commission for about two weeks and you handled everything. Crazy how that works. There was a point where I was so in and out of it because of the pain meds and the anesthesia wearing off. I don't know. I would say like the first four or five days I, I was, I'm kind of hazy. I'm piecing things together because I slept a lot. Yeah. I came to you once and you were carrying the laundry back and forth and you asked me if I wanted dinner. You're very capable of maintaining a household. Yeah, it's not hard. Yeah. I had to do all this without you. Mm -hmm. 
So to think that just because I'm in a relationship now, I suddenly can't take care of myself yeah. is asinine. And to think that we're in a relationship and I'm not going to take care of you if you're down and out, if somebody really believes that about me, what does that say about my the perspective that people have of who I am as a person? Right. People say that they want our relationship and how amazing and in love we are. And people say that we look like we're in the honeymoon phase all the time, but are asking me if you were injured, if I would feel weird about taking care of you. Well, no, she said it, she didn't mean to come off as judgmental. She said my ex-husband did not understand it would not get better someday. That gives me the same vibe as, so you're saying you can't take the trash out? Like people give me shit. Sometimes it's men, sometimes it's women over the fact that I get my nails done. So I would prefer to not take my trash out. I would rather you not take the trash out. Right. Like I just spent a hundred dollars getting a Manny Petty. I would like to keep that nice. Would you mind using your man hands? handle the trash please here's a thought yeah i mean i, I want to clarify i can do it i can't take the trash out my job as a man is to protect provide and lead mm -hmm. if you were injured in any way shape or form and i had to step in and do everything right while you recovered or this is just your life now and we've said i do Mm -hmm. And it is my duty for sickness and health, for better or worse, to take care of you. Is that not provision? I would say I'm that is. still providing a life for you. I'm still doing my duty as your husband to make sure that your needs are met, that you are safe and taken care of. If that means I have to work an extra job, mm -hmm. if that means I have to do the laundry and dishes, if that means that I have to hire a maid or burn the house down, collect insurance, and move into a smaller house. Mm -hmm. I feel like you shouldn't have said that. I would never burn my house down. I, I Just would, to clarify. Yeah. No, I like my house a lot. Yeah. Um, well, just in case future right. yeah. inspectors, if uh, anything happens. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I really just... I guess I just don't understand that mindset. And, and like, I understand, I understand what it is to be a caretaker because I've been a fucking caretaker for people. Mm -hmm. And I know how stressful that is. And I know how hard it is for men to be caretakers, especially to the women they love, because we are fixers and we want to help and we want to do things. And if we can't do things, it makes us feel weak. It makes us feel inept. It makes yeah. us feel like we are unable to protect because now you're out of commission <coughs> or hurt. There's a whole lot that goes into that. I also know that when you're being a caretaker, you got to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. If you fucking let your battery die and there's not enough charge there to take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of another person? Yeah. It is, a lot of this shit just comes down to basic understanding. It sounds to me like she got hurt and he just didn't want to fucking help. What does that say about the relationship that was there? Like, mm -hmm. And she called him an ex, right? I believe so. Well, yes. there you go. Fucking that was a well-deserved goodbye. Uh, KK said, you two are beautiful humans changed my life. We are not humans. We are the same organic decaying matter as everyone else. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Another fight club reference. You are not special. I can't. Peaches I... is a, a robot. There's a little tiny alien behind her face. That's piloting that body body. And when like her hands don't work and she drops shit, that's the alien not paying attention and pushing the right lever to make her hands do what her hands are supposed to do. Did you ever watch The Big Bang Theory when they're like, Sheldon, if you were a robot, would you know that you were a robot? No. <laughs> robots don't bleed. I've given birth. Oh, yeah? Robots don't bleed? Oh, you haven't seen Terminator yet. Never mind. I will go cut my finger off. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do well with that, that life questioning is this reality or not? I th There are times, I'm going to be very vulnerable right now. There are times where I legit have to ground myself in reality and be like, this is real fucking life. This is not a simulation. <laughs> this is not the Matrix. Like, I, it's startling at times. So. To recognize I'm driving and I'm like, hey, bitch, you're fucking alive. This is real life. Somebody just said, oh, my fucking God, I just realized they're not sitting next to each other when she grabbed her drink. 
So she is sitting about six feet across from me. Yeah. <laughs> good I catch. told you I catch things good that catch. are thrown at me. That was a good catch. I'm so glad I could prove myself. Comedian Peach is a good alien. I We approve. Guys, stop it. Robots don't bleed. That has to be a t-shirt. We went um, as a shop outing and saw the latest Matrix that came out. Yep. And I was tripping balls. Like, oh my lord. Oh my lanta. And it came to a part in the movie where he's like in the pod and he's waking up. And I'm like getting uncomfortable in the back of my neck a little bit. And I was like, no, you're not in a pod right now. Like, what if the fabric of my reality is like blurred right now because I'm taking a psychedelic and it's helping me lift the veil of reality and I'm I'm understanding the message of the matrix. <laughs> uh, can't be doing that shit with mental illnesses. <laughs> yeah. Can't be doing that shit while you're on drugs. I just saw someone say, OMG Peaches, hey girl, I thought I missed a live, but I made it. I'm I'm glad you made it. Welcome. And it's not too late for you to go to To Be Better Co. and buy a t-shirt. To Be Better Co. and buy a t-shirt. You know, when I think about how my brain works and how it truly functions and how delusional I really can be, keeping myself in check, it's quite startling. Yeah. Why if I startling? If I just was unhinged, and didn't care about anything in life, I'm fairly certain I would be in a long-term mental institution. Yeah? If I didn't have the discipline and the understanding that I am an adult and my actions have consequences in my life, and now I have two human beings depending on me as a mother. Yeah. It is very difficult being a functioning, healthy human being. It is worth it, though. It does become easier. There are just definitely moments where I'm like, wow. Okay, so somebody just said that they thought the T-shirts were sold out. The shirts are not sold out. There's still 64 of the shirts in stock, 20 of the other shirts in stock. Um, somebody also said that the Australia address is not being accepted on the site, hmm. which I don't understand why, as I have all eight of the things in Australia set, but let me double check trying to do multiple things at once. Ugh, Zeke is still in the chat. So I'm not typing this out in the Discord. Uh, he asked uh, me to expand so you guys could celebrate with me because I was like, I'm exercising my brain, guys. Like, I'm problem solving. I couldn't figure out where the A and J folder was to move the PDFs to. And I started typing out. I was like, guys, I'm struggling. And I was like, I'm going to map it out for them. So they're like, okay, well, what are you doing? And I was like, I clicked the three buttons and I clicked the move button and I clicked this and I'm not seeing it. I was like, wait a minute. What if I click something else? And I clicked it and I found it. <laughs> and I was like, guys, I did it. <laughs> so that's the thing. I figured out technology. Yeah, super. Okay, let's see. Uh, Peaches is the reason why I'm now okay with being a traditional wife. She is who I want to be when I grow up. Stop it. I'm going to cry. Don't say that. Her style and everything. Heart emoji. I used to get bullied. <laughs> I used to get bullied very harshly to the point that I was seriously considering unaliving myself. And now people view me as an inspiration. And they love how I look. It's just, it's crazy. How life goes. Why are I, you? I, I hate to ask you this, but can you throw that that thumb drive back to me? There's no way I'm going to catch this as gracefully as you did. I'm probably going to get hit in the face with it, but throw it back to I me. I can't throw as good as I can catch. Okay, well then how about I throw something to you because somebody was like, that really messed with my brain. Why? I don't know, because people are weird and want... This is, no, now I'm under pressure. This is the closest thing to OnlyFans you guys will ever get. <laughs> you really are good at catching shit. I am, yeah. <laughs> Is this a response to something? <laughs> Why am I so good at it? I very rarely miss catching things. Yeah, I don't know. 
Huh. Okay. Ready? You're going to try throwing it back? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Ha-ha. He did it. <laughs> Perform, monkey. Huh. Perform. So stupid. Oh, my God, you guys. You are you are very super supportive of me doing techno- te- technology things. Thank you. Capone 609. And Zach. $50 or more get read right away. They should read all super chats and thank them for sending any money oh. because we do that. So let me explain how, how Steam Element works because there's a code that goes in there. Right. And when we are reading the book that we're reading, doing a book breakdown, which is the whole point of us doing a live stream up until we end and then go into, you know, read the actual super chats. Right. We give people the opportunity to interrupt the podcast and ha- end the discussion that we are doing for $50. And it is an Autobot command, an Autobot, Autobots. Um, but we do that so that if you have a relevant point, right. you can disrupt the podcast by paying for it, get your point interjected. Mm-hmm. And if it's a regular super chat, we read those after we're done having the conversation and then we answer questions for free. Right. Please don't make this about the money or try to make us look bad on the internet because that is not what we do here. We believe in helping people. The fact that we get to get paid for the right. time that we put into this podcast is a bonus. And in the event that we did not get paid to do the podcast, we would not be dedicating 60 plus hours a week of our life to do it because we have other things that we could be doing, like going on vacation and enjoying our fucking lives. I could be spending time with my kids. Brittany Jean said that they're saying that they're sold out for me. The shirts are not sold out. I don't understand. And I don't understand why the Australian uh, website address is shit's not working either. Because it's showing that it's set up on my end of the the commerce site. I I will admit that there's a strong possibility that there's something not set up properly as I'm the one that set all this shit up and I'm fucking learning as I go. (coughs) But there are still 59 (coughs) Ego Kills Talent shirts left and 17 of the Have You Checked In. Make sure that you're not looking at the red ego kill, ego kills talent. They are uh, the purple ones. Food's been picked up. Okay. Would you like to call it a night? Um, yeah, we can. Or we can go until food gets here. Some sizes. Ooh, some sizes are sold out. Uh-oh. Now I'm excited. Let's see which yeah, ones Yeah, we are just sold received out. depleted stock. What size? Before I click on it, what size do you think are sold out? I'm willing to bet the 4X is sold out because there was only one left last time I looked. I don't know. 4X is sold out. Yeah. We have 9 2X, 14 extra large, 17 large, 10 medium, and 8 small left. That's insane. It is insane, right? It's been almost an right? hour. Fucking wild. Wild. You know, people coming through successfully purchased one. T-shirt perform monkey. I'm working on something for that already. Um, I have, for those of you who don't follow Jeff Graham on TikTok, if you are active on TikTok, lift your phone up, open TikTok, go to Jeffrey Graham Tattoos and give him a subscribe and then just comment on one of his videos here because of To Be Better. Let's let's blow his shit up. Yeah. Everybody do that. Just tell Jeffrey Graham's, even if you follow him already, just go, go to his newest video and be like, here because of To Be Better. I would love to see that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, because yeah, he would text me and be like, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> <laughs> blow his shit up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he is actually designing, uh, I went through a BPD episode like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and I reached out to him and gave him very specific guidelines for a piece of art for the whiskey room. And that's the the, the monkey that he's been drawing on his live streams over the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. It is fucking on point. Yeah. But I'm going to have it printed on metal big and put it in the whiskey room. Let's call it, babe. It's almost 10 o'clock. I'm getting tired. Okay. Guys, go follow Jeff Graham. Jeffrey Graham Tattoos. He does my tattoos. Tell him To Be Better sent you on one of his videos. Yeah. I would love to see that shit. I would love to get a text message tomorrow like, hey, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just bought your guys' Patreon. Love you guys. Thank you for that. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you. You guys supporting us the way that you're doing. Yes, the monkey that tattoo that he was designing is for me. It's not a tattoo. It will be a big piece of art. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, somebody said your ring is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. He surprised me. I never showed him a ring. 
He never talked about rings. He just kind of like. Fucking big ass rock. All right. It, yeah. Let's call it. You guys, thank you so much for joining our live stream tonight. We'll be live again Sunday night doing expedited emails. If you would like to get in on that, you can go to our website, to be better co, mm-hmm. to be better dot co. I really need to change it to Chris and peaches.com. I need yeah. to get that done this weekend to be better dot co. And then I'll just have that redirect to Chris and peaches.com. Sounds good. Um, but that will, you can go click on downloads and it'll take you to a form. If you'd like to have an expedited email read, mm-hmm. I, I think there might be some slots available for this weekend. If not, it'll be next. Zach deals with all that. Have your people contact my people. We'll do lunch. <laughs> Ready to call it. Yeah. Have a good night guys. Bye guys.